It seems today that all we see are useless magic trailers you can't believe. So where are those informed, honest people who help you choose what to buy? With Prop Dog you can always rely. Prop Dog are a team who will always aim to please you. Integrity and service that you can't deny. It's time for Prop Dog Live. Hello and welcome to Prop Dog Live. So, um, really bad timing, literally just as we started the intro, the phone rang and Alex has went off through the phone because we forgot to take it off the hook. So, um, yes, it's been a while. It's been um, three weeks in the year. We missed two lives. Three weeks since the last live. So, um, hello everyone. I hope you're all well. I hope you had a really good Christmas. Oh, he's back. Oh, did you take the phone off the hook? I did take the phone off the hook. Okay, yeah. I hope, hope you had a really good Christmas. Um, did you have a good Christmas? I had a brilliant Christmas. You know, best Christmas in New Year I've had for a long time. And me. You know why? Why was that, then? It was me and Aki, what so Aki's here. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen before, this is Aki, this is my new pooch. Um, he is a, uh, a cockapoo, and uh, yeah, I, he was uh, on the live uh, three weeks ago for the first time. Uh, he's probably double in size since you've seen him. I don't see him <laughs> growing, but everyone else says he's, he's growing a lot. And uh, yeah, he's been great, haven't he, buddy? Been learning loads of new tricks. And uh, Bobo's getting better with him, but they don't really get much closer than this at the moment. So, um, but yeah, we hope you all had a good Christmas and New Year. Um, uh, it's a pain about being on lockdown again. And uh, because of lockdown, Jason's now on furlough. So um, it's gone really quiet in the shop anyway. And in, Jason has to get public transport because of his eyes, he can't drive. So uh, it's easy to put Jason on furlough. So he's at home at the moment. Um, he's answering a few emails from home every now and again, and he'll be uh, uh, joining us on the live if he's not there already. Um, uh, what else has been going on? Uh, Mila's uh, away. So Mila's been in uh, Bulgaria on holiday for a couple of weeks, uh, but she has to do quarantine as well. So um, she's on quarantine at the moment. She should be back on Monday, but if it doesn't get any uh, any busier and work, we're gonna have to furlough Mila as well. So it'll just be me and Alex for the foreseeable future until this blooming god awful lockdown is over. So um, uh, yeah, what a pain that has been. So, um, Anything to catch up on? Anything to say? No, hello. I've, I've missed doing these lives. I have. It feels I like have. ages. Yeah, I know, yeah. It wasn't really feasible to do one Christmas uh, Eve. Uh, was it Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? Which Christmas I wanted to watch. Yeah, Christmas Day. Day. Was, uh... And then, um, uh, yeah, we're all off last week as well. So uh, yeah, it wasn't yeah. really feasible then. So, uh, yeah, we have missed it. So let's see who is around. So, uh, Finley's first. Finley. Of course dude. he is. Good effort, mate. First of the year. Absolutely. And Otto, our second. Hello, Otto, my friend. Hey, um, Otto. Uh, oh, I had a good yes. chat with Otto. So, yeah. So um, for New Year, I did actually contact to for New Year because really? every New Year in Sweden they watch a film called Dinner for One. Right. At seven o'clock yeah. in Sweden, Dinner for One comes on the TV. It's like a 25 minute film and everyone watches it. So okay. we, I watched we, it. We have something like that as well. It's called The Wizard of Oz. Well, it's not quite the same. <laughs> but it's actually Dinner for One is actually the most watched film of all time. No way. Because every year, I think they do it in Germany as well. Yeah. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. So I had, for my new year, I did, because we've got lots of European customs, of course. Yeah. I did something from, I tried to do something from every country in Europe to celebrate New Year. You never told me any of this. Yeah, yeah. You so I had to wear red either. underwear for Italy, which I'm not sure whether I made that one up or not. But uh, that's nothing for you, because look at your trousers yeah, yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in Denmark, I, I think that. they jump off a chair. Okay. Greek, they smash a pomegranate. England, we drink beer and cider. English, wine. English, we just get uh, sherry, sherry, yeah, yeah. Yep, Sweden, we did had had some potato salad and uh, watched dinner for one. It was oh, good. Right. It was a great. It was a really good fun. Ah, what's the movie about? What's the uh, dinner for one about? It's about an old woman and um, the she's got these four guests, but they don't really exist. And the butler has to pretend to be each for each of the guests, and he gets drunk consequently. Um, oh. Throughout the evening, and I mean, it's slapstick. Like, well, it's, we know it's, someone like that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> also from Sweden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's basically, yeah. Jonas, uh, it really is. Uh, yeah, I bet it's a drinking. I think they do actually drink to it as well. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I think there is a drinking game involved with dinner for one. But anyway, oh. so hello, Otta. Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, and he says, um, "Here's to a magical new year." Uh, cheers, Otta. Yeah, kombucha. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, Charlie Robinson says, uh, happy Poets Day. Hello, Charlie. Uh, in fact, Charlie, we got a letter today um, from uh, your teachers. Um, is that Mr. Cookson? Or Miss, Miss Cookson. Miss Cookson and uh, Mr. Lang. Mr. Miss Lang. Mr. Mr. Lang, Lang, yep. So, Lang, yeah, Lang. Yeah, apparently, yeah. Uh, prop dog. Uh, well, apparently, one of my pupils, uh, Mr. Charlie Robinson, is a customer of your shop. And uh, she's no they've noticed that you um, seem <laughs> to be shuffling cards during your online lessons, Charlie. 
Dude, this is true. Are you shuffling? Did they know you were shuffling? You've got to be careful what you're doing outside because yeah. they might think you're doing something else, Charlie. But um, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I'm shuffling cards while I'm doing your live lessons. Um, other than that, you're doing well, you're doing fairly well, apparently. They reckon you're doing fairly well so Could far. Could do better. Could, Could do, do better. It's the um, overall theme. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah, uh, the card, Charlie, dude. <laughs> Watch out, Charlie. Mm. Watch out. I mean, my, my, my advice is always to work well at school, you know, because um, uh, that's what we all did. You know, I worked very hard at school and got all my exams. I worked very hard at school and um, now I work in the magic shop, which I, is fantastic. I, I, I mean, I, I have to admit here, I, I, this is no um, um, uh, guidance for any young person out there, but I, I spent most of my uh, childhood um, skiving off school. Uh, and doing other things, um, uh, sports, driving, and magic. And um, yeah, I went from many, many schools. Mum and dad moved around a lot, and I left school with one qualification in art, and that was it. So um, yeah, I did all right. I did all my qualifications later on in life, though. When I joined the Marines, I did um, GCSE, English, Math, Physics, Archaeology. I did Archaeology as well, and um, yeah, many other things. So, uh, but yeah, I never. Well, never I do think I know this. I think you said it once before that you've never done a job that you didn't really like. No. Which I think is probably, I think that's a Ooh. really good life lesson because I've stuck at jobs that I've gone like, oh, I can't bear this I for did another. one job Well, I didn't like. It sounded cool. My first ever, ever job was I worked in a dark room um, uh, splicing um, uh, films together. Uh, and well, That sounds all right. Yeah, it was, but I was only 16 and uh, they were offering more money for the night shift. So I decided to take the night shift and as a 16 year old working in pitch dark, of course, there was, no, there was no way I was going to sleep during the day, and I just ended up going to the toilets and falling asleep in the toilets for four hours. Um, yeah, I got sat the next day. Um, but yeah, no, that was the only job I didn't really like. It was just a job. And then uh, after that, I decided I was never going to do a job I didn't want. So yes, I was a, I was a lifeguard, and then a Royal Marine, and then a magician, and then uh, a shop owner. And now, presenter of a magic show. Wow. International, uh, yes, yes, international yes. man of mystery. Yes, but anyway, yeah, Charlie, hello, mate. Uh, I hope all is well and happy post day to you. Frank Valenti's there. Uh, happy New Year and great to see you and you, Frank. I hope all is well over there in Florida. I'm missing your weather. I wish I was in Florida. Mm -hmm. Freezing here. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's around uh, between minus three and three degrees most days at the moment. So um, uh, Jason is on. He says I'm working. Yeah, I phoned Jason earlier on. It was just no yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. No He's answer. He's having a party at home. That's what he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's having a party. So it's him and the kids and the wife. You can't hear anyone else, but yeah. Uh, in fact, no, Jason, he's probably on the barbecue. Mm. Oh, yeah. He's probably barbecuing yeah. something out there, all wrapped up with a scarf and everything. Yeah, barbecuing his, his, his chips. He barbecued the, uh, he, did, he did his turkey on the barbecue, didn't he? He's very good at the barbecue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. Um, John Middleton's there, says Happy New Year. Sandy says Happy New Year, doggers. And uh, Happy New Year to everybody that's saying Happy New Year. That way I haven't got to say it all. Um, James Kerman just dropping in. Hope you're all well. We're very well. Thank you. Stacey's there. She's a uh, little. Uh, that's with a little uh, fish that James. Oh, what, what fish were, uh, oh yeah, that? Uh, James Kerman, nice fish, that's a uh, common carp and uh, looks to be about ooh, pushing on 30 pounds there James I would say, is that about right? Uh, very nice, um, Frank says uh, any info on the best way to memorise a deck? Uh, there are many many ways, um, one of the ways I found was really good because I used to do a lot of memory tricks and memory work when I was younger with a whole um, uh, memory system where you, you associate either a word or a photo or a picture with a certain number or a letter and you can work things out that way. And cards I found very good. When I learned mnemonic, oh, we're talking years and years ago. I learned it when I was working out in Dubai, actually. I was just going down the beach just memorising these cards. I had a famous face with every single playing card and then I would basically have interactions between those people. So you may have, I can't remember what they were now, long time ago but you may have like Tom Cruise would be the four of hearts and then uh, Nicole Kidman would be the six of clubs and then you'd imagine something going on between those two which you never know um, yeah and that worked for me but there are loads of different ways out there some people just do it purely by repetition do you have a way of doing it I uh, I did the classic way of writing the face on the back yeah and just running through the cards um, not in any particular order but just and then just looking at the cards every you know on the train any moment you got, you just either look at the face and see if you could remember what its matching pair, what its number was, or a number, whatever. And the way I drew the number on the back of each card was slightly different for each card, yeah. so I'd remember the sort of the twerks of how I drew it. But I thought the best bit was actually trying to keep remembering it. Once you've got it down, yeah. I then spent ages, every time I saw any number, whether it be on a car number, play it on a door number, postcodes, I'd then go, yeah. I'd then constantly, so, yeah, so, you know, for 21, I'd immediately think of what card was at 21. Every yeah. time I saw a number, right. I'd try and match it. So I was spending my entire time, even though I wasn't actually doing a magic trick, just to keep it in my head, because otherwise you kind of lose it if you don't do it for a few 
few weeks. Yeah, you, well, I've completely you, you, forgot mine, yeah. All I remember about mine is I had a way of remembering who was rich. So basically, diamond, anyone who was diamond was somebody who's extremely rich, okay? So you, nice. like, have a Richard Branson or anyone because it's a diamond. Anyone who was um, a heart was someone who was, like, a heartthrob, somebody who's yeah. very good-looking, like, you got your Tom Cruise, Richard Gere, that yeah. kind of thing. Anyone who was a club was, for me, it's a sports personality. So because I'm a former Royal Marine, anyone uh, who was a PTI in the, the Royal Marines, physical training instructor in the Royal Marines, it was called a club swinger. And they would, the reason they had these big clubs and you do all these exercises, they were called clubs for me. So any, any club was a sports personality. And um, I don't know if I should say about the spade, because um, uh, um, what's that uh, Twitter thing again? The um, uh, Magic Transcribed might go on there. But yeah, oh, basically God, yeah, uh, a, a spade for me was just any black personality. I know it's probably, it sounds well, really racist. It, was, it wasn't racist, but card, yeah, 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 yeah. But that was the way I, I did it. It's not a racist thing. It's purely just the way I remembered it. Well, I could be, and that I, I really, really well. red cards could be a ginger Head, they, yeah, if, we anything, really want, if we really want to start it, getting picky. It was anything you could remember, okay? And for me, that was just the way I remembered it. And then, you know, you'd have like a fight between Tom Cruise and Richard Gere or, you know, um, if it's a sports personality, let's say you had, it wasn't Lewis Hamilton at the time, but let's say it was yeah. Lewis Hamilton would be a sports person, he may run over um, uh, Richard Branson yeah. or something like that. Yeah, and uh, I'd yeah. always remember the, the sequence of events that way. I mean, I, I, just, yeah. I, just, I, just, I just memorized it. Yeah. I found that, I reckon you... Um, was it Frank you asked? Yeah. I reckon Frank, if you if you start if you dealt out thirteen cards in a random order now, by the end of this live you'll be you'll remember those thirteen easily in that order. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. It's yeah. only when you get into the forties and fifties that you start getting confused. It's quite easy up until yeah. that point. So it's not it's not as hard as it looks. Yeah. Well my way as well only worked if you already had a number system for the numbers because obviously if you're going to do it as a number as well you had to associate a number and of course I have yeah. words for every single number from one to about 500 yeah. so I'd associate the name as well so uh, but yeah and I wouldn't bother going all these people with the, the the crib sheets and the and the watch and thing I kind of think there's no point if you the idea is to you the, the advantage of a memorized deck is the fact that it is in your head yeah yeah uh, as soon as you've got to start doing a crib then you might as well not bother with the memorized deck you might as well do something else I think that's um, my advice yeah, yeah. And also, it's a method that no one thinks you'd use. Uh, Andy Tingley says, uh, uh, hi guys, happy new year and welcome back. Uh, I'm just going to plug my phone in actually, I've got to do the, uh, the close up thing on there. As you can see, that's going to work very close, very quick. Um, oh, well, everything's coming up on here. No, no, stop, stop, stop. Um, there we are. Uh, right, okay. Uh, Stacey says, we missed you. Uh, we missed you too, Stacey. We missed it. We missed everybody. Um, oh, let me just close this. Come on, what's going on? Close. Working very well. Um, uh, Chris Watts, I oh, won't well, 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 bother with that. Uh, Chris Watts says, Happy uh, New Year, missed you all as well. Uh, Simon Cartwright uh, says, uh, Afternoon, Happy New Year, great to see you both. Uh, afternoon, all. Simon Keane, Jay Callan says, uh, Thanks to you and Aki, uh, we're picking up a puppy in one to two weeks. Way, hey, good effort, um, Ak uh, um, Jake. Uh, Aki is spelled A K I, by the way, um, uh, as in the Japanese word for autumn. Um, and uh, I'm just going to see if I can quickly get this up again without the cable, because this is just amazing. So, uh, yeah, let's work. No, it's not going to work. Uh, okay, yeah, no worries. <laughs> you want Aki, not show me. You this is just the cutest little photo uh, ever, but um, anyway. Uh, Darren Snellgar says, hi, guys. Uh, is that a ring boxes, Liam Barden? Uh, yeah, we have one or two uh, ring boxes. Um, uh, we had, uh, how many did we ordered? I think it was, so we ordered 70, 70 in the first batch, um, 20, and they've all gone, and then another 20 as well. Uh, and then we got, yeah, go. that's what we've got so, left over there. I mean, so, um, if you want to see the vanish, oh, don't do that. Oh, no, hang on. Yeah, so with, with the ring boxes, what I found with the first one I had is you do need to wear it in a little bit. So a couple of things. First of all, it's very tight on there, so you do need to give that a little bit of a wear in first. Just soften up the material a bit. A bit like a, um, a leather wallet or leather shoes, just soften up a bit. Uh, and then it works a lot better. Now, the other thing as well, if you're going to do a ring that has a head on it like that, uh, what can happen is as that goes in, it can catch on it. So at the moment, uh, that should pretty much go in a bit better now, or almost. But you see how the ring gets caught on yeah. there, okay? But... Um, if you've got a ring like that, my advice is to save them. Oh, it's a very nice diamond. I tell you what, we're going to put the diamond in head first over there, just to keep that protected like that. Okay, um, that way, well and truly protected. You can push it in yourself and close the doors. Close the door. That's it, like that. Perfect. There we go. And um, all the hard work is done. There we are. And you can even hear it in there. And um, you take the ring box. 
There we go, and um, that's how uh, I would handle it. So yeah, ring box is back in. Uh, it is uh, an amazing bit of kit. I mean, hat off to Shannon's Mines, the, the number one uh, thing they've ever created. Uh, what I would say, if you are gonna get one of these, uh, I prefer the black for the main reason is it doesn't show up any dirt. If you get the red one, make sure you've got clean hands whenever you use it. Because if you're practicing with it and your hands aren't 100% clean, you're gonna have dirty marks over it in about five or six goes. Uh, but it is a great little bit of kit. My handling, uh, by the way, is to actually engage the gimmick, um, if you know what it is, beforehand. So it's engaged right now, so that when I close it, it's there, all the hard work is done. I don't even need to do any uh, movements afterwards, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, remember saying there's no noise that way as well. So there was a thing, I don't think that, well, some people complained about the noise the first time so around, didn't the, they? The way it's meant to be handled, you put it in and then you do it afterwards. There still isn't any noise on, on well, that one as well, yeah. But yeah. I, I just like the idea of it going straight into it there, so I'm straight away, I'm done. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I think yeah. I would stick. I think personally, I'd use a wedding band rather than the. Oh yeah, a solitaire yeah. Solitaire, if I yeah. can. In this, if a solitaire has a very thin uh, thing on it, that's fantastic. But do practice with a few different rings to get to handle yeah. them. But I would say if it has got any kind of larger stone on it, uh, and it sticks outwards. I mean, many of them are just narrow all the way through. But if it does stick out a bit, turn it around so it's going to protect that. Put that bit in first. Mm. That's fully protected then, and that way it'll drop through really cleanly. Have you ever had? Because um, I. I I don't know if it's ever happened to anyone or whether it's just rumours, but the idea is that someone once said to me, never, never, never do a trick with a, a, a ring with a stone or an inset because if, the, if right. it falls off, you know, the, the stone goes missing or whatever, you're, you're left with a right. big insurance claim, whereas with the wedding band, obviously. Do you know why all these rumours started? Why did all these rooms start? Because back in the day, when people did ring flights, um, this is when all ring flights were in those little key cases and you yeah. pull them up and the keys would drop out. Because there's a lot of space to put a real. It's my daughter. Amateurs. Okay. Um, <laughs> is it an emergency? I doubt it. <laughs> Does she not know you're on a live show? No, she does. She should be watching, shouldn't she, eh? She could be in trouble. She could be chased down the street by somebody. <laughs> yeah, so uh, back in the day, the, these ring cases would have a very large area to put a reel in. So people weren't worried about the reel size and they would use the biggest reel they could to fit in it. The bigger the reel, the longer the line can be pulled out. Um, so they use these big reels and in a big reel goes a big spring. Now the problem yeah. with a big reel and a big spring is the amount of torque. So you let go of that thing and yeah. whoosh, it goes back with an incredible yeah. acceleration. I mean, these things will take your fingers off if you're not careful. Right. They're really powerful. And the clips back in the day were just wire. It's almost like a safety pin kind of bit of wire. And you, 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 you clip it onto there and let go. And after about 10 or 12 goes, that little clip would start to become looser and looser with the amount of torque coming in. And there's a very good chance that as it pulls back, it's gonna mm -hmm. pull straight back and that's gonna really? drop on the floor. The other thing is when that goes back poof, that much yeah. speed, if that catches something on it, it can easily pull that diamond out if it's loose. So one of the reasons um, I made ring flight, uh, a lot of people said, oh, can you make my ring flight more, uh, with more torque, so it's more powerful to pull back. But if you do that, you risk these problems. So I always made it so it's nice and loose. So when you let go of it, it's only ever gonna travel, if you do it right in my handling, okay, when you do the ring flight, then you come back and you, you do that and you let go. So it's only gonna travel from here to there and it's only gonna go gently down. It's not gonna go whoom, immensely yeah, yeah. Um, powerfully so the stone won't come out. But all you've got to do is when you're getting ready, get your clip, put the clip on, engage it like that, so it's a very nice ring. And just check that stone, just give it a little stone. Say, oh, make sure your stone's nice and tight in there. But do check the ring. If it's got a diamond, put it in your finger and have a quick look and check there's no uh, ring uh, stones missing. If there's a stone missing, tell them. Because they might not know. They might not realise it dropped out five minutes ago before you actually got to the yeah. table. So just show a oh, very nice ring like that. And then you can do your little vanish and it will be fine. But back in the day, those ring flights will take your fingers off if you want careful. Right, okay. And that's where the room started. Because rings did, they fly across yeah, the room sometimes. It, if that clip wasn't 100% on, do across the room. That's another reason why the, the clips we use are cast, okay? If you use um, something that's not a cast metal, it can bend. The, the clips we use, very, very hard to bend. And once it clips into place, you can feel it clip, you know it's safe and on there. I did drop someone's ring on the floor because I forgot to, to put to reload the envelope into my JWell wallet. That's always a problem. Mm. <laughs> I have <laughs> dropped the ring. moment. <laughs> in the thousands of performances I've done it, I've dropped the ring twice, but I've only dropped it while giving the ring back to them on one, and the yeah. other one was when they gave it to me and I didn't quite yeah. go it properly and dropped it on the floor, but it's fine, just pick it up yeah, and yeah. give it back to them. There was never an issue with it. So, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Torin says, uh, what's the dog's name? Torin, the no, uh, dog's name is Aki, A-K-I, is a Japanese word for autumn, uh, because he was born in the autumn and he's a kind of an autumn red color. And he is just gorgeous. I mean, look can at him, see, yeah, can you see? Let me see if I can zoom in on that with the, camera, the main cam. Uh, oh, no, oh, oh. Yeah, uh, oh, can I wake up Aki? Where are you? There you go. Oh, he's woken up now. 
But uh, yeah, he is a gorgeous dog. Um, I didn't name him. Uh, I was going to give him a name. Um, I wasn't sure which puppy I was going to get, but the, uh, the puppy I chose from the breeder, uh, I like the name Aki so much I decided to keep it. So it's much better than the name. I was going to call him Huey or something like that, but um, yeah, very, very cute. Uh, right. Uh, oh, Jason's already said Aki on there. Uh, hi, Doggy says Peter. Cypher's there, says hello, gents. Hello, Cypher. I hope all is well. Uh, it feels like it's been so long since the last live, says Finley. It does. Good evening uh, from Istanbul, says Lee. Hello, Lee. I hope all is well. I didn't Lee know Alex. he was in Istanbul. Yeah, Lee's been over in Istanbul. What, 20 odd years now, Lee, at least, if not longer. Oh, I uh, love yeah, Istanbul. Yeah. I've done two gigs in Istanbul and I've seen none of it. Have you not? Nope. I saw, I saw oh. the Istanbul as I landed on the plane. I saw it from the taxi ride across when I got there at night in the dark. I saw it from the taxi to the venue and back and then back again. I didn't get to see any oh. of it. Yeah. I had yeah. a great time. I used, we, we were on the Asian side and we used to have to get the ferry across the Bosphorus to the European side every time. It was great. Great place. Well, I, I did, uh, that's two gigs there. I did one, well, those are two um, trade show gigs, um, but I did one gig there. Uh, you see the one with the silks I do when I produce all the silks. Oh, yeah. TV commercial. Yeah, that was filmed in Istanbul as well. And I did get to see a bit of it then, but again, only from the back of a taxi. And I got to see the, the underground catacombs where it was all oh, filmed. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I got to see that. But again, I've not seen a single shop or single road or oh. anything there. Shame. But, uh, lovely place, Istanbul. Uh, Adrian says, uh, back off the sugar wagon, Dave. Uh, yes. So um, uh, Adrian was very, very kind. And he brought us a hamper that was about that big, by that big, uh, that tall, with the most amazing sweets and treats and cakes and everything you could possibly imagine. I mean, it must have cost a fortune. And a lot of thought had gone into the choices. However, it was all sugary stuff. <laughs> And I don't usually eat sugar, and uh, I made an exception this time. And uh, yeah, I've been running around like a, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. a, a sugar rush madman for a couple of days. I've probably even put on some weight, uh, Christmas weight. But there were some insects in there, which are very nice. But then the insects were flavoured as well. So like toffee flavoured insects and salt and vinegar, which is wrong for insects. It should be insect flavoured. So um, uh, yeah, but thank you very much, Adrian. It was incredible. Really if incredible. anyone is kind enough in the future to buy us any little treats or anything, um, please don't buy sugar stuff because Jason's on a bit of a diet as well. I don't eat sugar normally. Uh, I know you do, but um, you don't yeah. count. Um, yeah. But yeah, we much prefer savoury sweets. Yeah. There were some <laughs> wonderful biscuits in there though. Um, I can't remember what they were called, but they were like, they were like um, perfifanous. They were kind of like a German biscuit. They were really nice, Adrian. I don't know where you got them from, but they were good. You ate those before I got along. Uh, I ate, I ate, I, 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 along with the two packs of Kringle, with Pringles. I, I'm in trouble. You haven't forgiven me for these Pringles. Well, they were the only re really decent, non-sweet Well, I went savories. for them. They were sitting there. But yeah, they were, they were not... You were all... Mu no, you were having the tonics. You were eating those tonics caramel bars like they were going out of fashion. I was going... Meanwhile, <laughs> I was around eating eat the some, Pringles. Turned around to eat some savoury stuff and they're yeah. all gone. But yeah. Uh, but no, uh, thank you, Adrian. That was very thoughtful of you, mate. I'm very much appreciated. Uh, right, Matthew Colley says, uh, um, uh, Happy New Year. I hope you're all keeping well. Adam Wayne Evans, happy, guy, happy New Year, guys. Has Monarch come in and have you seen it? Uh, what is Monarch? Oh, is that the... I think that is the um, the Matrix thing. Um, I think... I don't think... Uh, I don't think it's going to be anything other than uh, the traditional Matrix method. Oh, I haven't seen it. Um, it's probably going to be a, uh, a shell... Four coins, and um, yeah, traditional methods, um, but just really well done. So I'm assuming it's his, it's his teaching and his subtleties. I don't think there's anything revolutionary about the gimmicks or anything like that. I think it's just a routine well done. Right. Oh, okay. from, what, from what I see on the video, um, yeah. I can see what he's doing. He's doing it very well. Yeah, no, I haven't seen any of it yet. So uh, what I did like uh, in the trailers um, is the uh, the lever chop cup. In fact, oh. we've got one over here. Yeah, lever chop cup. So. Excuse me. If you haven't seen the trailer for the new leather chop cups, watch it. It is brilliant. I mean, it starts off with a little scene with a guy making it, a little craftsman sitting there with his knife and making it all. And um, uh, it's a very nice little intro. But then it goes on to a nice little routine with a chop cup. And it has some of the most beautiful moves I've ever seen um, in, in Magic. Um, a lot of moves on there that I've never seen before as chop cup moves as well. So they're completely brand new moves and very, very stylishly done. Um, so do check out the trailer for that. It's worth watching just on its own. But as we were saying, it's a shame that that wasn't actually taught, isn't it? 
Yeah, so there's no instructions with it, which is a shame because that routine is really good. Really nice, but uh, whoever, I don't even know who performed it, but whoever performed it was obviously very proficient and you might find it's like their fism routine or something and they don't actually want to share that with anybody, but they just thought they'd do it as a bit yeah, of yeah. A, um, uh, a show off to, uh, to the, the, uh, the chocolate well, with, but think, it's just it's just beautiful to watch. I mean, beautiful TCC, are, are just, they're just knocking out some amazing stuff, aren't they? They are, really good stuff, yeah. They care yeah. about how it's made. Yep, absolutely. Uh, unlike other um, uh, manufacturers out they're like Mr. Magic or um, Uday and, and, yeah, and all the other stuff. The, yeah, they're not going for the sell it cheap, sell a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, that little ball, I, mean, I, was, I thought I thought it might be a bit heavy. but I don't think I've had a single complaint. I don't think that, I don't think that is heavy at all. Um, a single complaint about any TCC product? No. Not one. No, I think so far no. that they've all been bulletproof. Um, so I love yeah. the balls. I love the cup. Yeah. Um, packaging's excessive perhaps, but nice. Oh, it's um, just a box, isn't it? Really, it's yeah. just a posh box. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, but um, I just feel it's just a bit of it. I mean, I'd love to know who was doing that routine. Yeah, it, it and is whether or not that routine. routine is available. And if not, then I think TCC should should ask him to a little dinner. Because if that came, I mean, if that came with the tuition as well. Yeah. Absolutely. You could charge. You charge next. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people out there can work it out by by yeah. watching it. But um, uh, but yeah, it's just really beautiful, really beautiful nice. chop cup. Indeed it is. Um, uh, afternoon, all prop bloggers. Missed you all, says Walter. Nice trousers, Alex, says Torin. Yeah, but like my pyjamas. I've got a pair of pyjamas on that. Um, in Turkey, they wear red underwear, says Lee. Ah, oh, maybe uh, it was yeah. Turkey that did the red underwear. I think I had, I, I, so I had lentils. Uh, I had oh. sausages and lentils, for, which is the Italian thing. So maybe maybe Turkey was the, the red underwear. Uh, yeah. Uh, Paul Sunderland says, thank you for the usual great service and the safe delivery of my new close-up pad. I love the teal collar. It is a nice colour, isn't teal, it, Paul? Teal, very popular. Yeah. We do have other colours of the pads, actually, um, that aren't actually on the website yet. I've got to get around to, to putting all the new velvets on and some new levers as well. Um, Ryan Adams says, um, have you seen The Monarch uh, by Avi? Yap, uh, Open Coin Matrix Effect. Uh, what are your thoughts? We just discussed that one. Uh, Adam says, I'm loving Magnet O by Henry Harrius. You should get it in your shop. Uh, we are trying, Adam. Um, afternoon, uh, or oh, good day from uh, Canada, says Andrew Short. Um, Lou is over there. Lou says hi. Hello, uh, Lou. Just a little wavy hand there. Uh, Shane McDermott says, hey guys, what's up? Stay safe. Theo says, hello from Greece. I'm going to place my summer order soon, Dave. How does tax work if I buy from Greece? Thank you and keep up the amazing work you do there. Right, well, that's a good um, uh, lead into, oh, uh, yeah. Go. So, at the moment, anybody buying from outside the UK and inside the EU, it's treated exactly as if you're ordering from uh, Australia or um, the US. Now, at the moment, it says on the every price, X tax, which means excluding tax for non-EU, for, uh, for outside EU customers, sorry, for EU customers. Uh, outside EU customers. We, we're waiting to get that changed. Our web guys are a bit busy at the moment. So just order as normal and you'll be charged the VAT free price, okay? And then we'll put a customs form on it, and then at your end, you'll have to pay customs tax, customs fees based on the price we put on the envelope. Um, so, um, more often than not, you're not gonna be charged tax for it. Uh, I think there's certain limits, not sure what they are, but uh, either way, it's gonna be cheaper at the moment to buy from us than it would have beforehand. However, things are all changing. Now, I was on the phone with my accountant today. As from today, we are unfortunately discontinuing all downloads on the PopDog website. So any download will be wiped off. They're not even viewable on there. If you bought downloads, don't worry, they're still available as before to view because you've already purchased it. But the reason is the new rules of Brexit, the stuff they didn't tell you about before, are all coming in. And basically every single country has its own VAT rate and would have to work out some system where every person gets a, paid a different VAT rate and basically would have to set up a separate company based outside the UK, but an English speaking company to host all this stuff. And it is just so complex. The amount of accounting it's going to take to get this done will never make enough money from it. We don't sell enough downloads to make the money back. It will cost for the extra accounting on this. And problems are really going to occur in July. On July the 1st, uh, the new rules are coming in. So at the moment, you don't pay VAT when you buy something in Europe, okay? And in, on the 31st of July, everyone's going to have to pay VAT in Europe, but at your own specific rate. So you're going to log on and you'll see a price on the website and you'll think, that's my price. And you go to check out and it will realize where you are and it will change the price of that product 
there were VAT on that product for your country. And then every month we had to do a tax return VAT return listing every single country and what every person bought and what the totals are and it's going to be an absolute nightmare for us. We're going to have to change the entire way the website works and we don't even know if we can do this. We don't even know if it's possible. So, uh, I mean, in theory, there's a possibility that this could kill our prop bog in January and July. We don't know. Um, it's either going to kill us off or we may only be able to sell to the UK or only the UK and the US or we may have to change our the way the whole website works and spend a fortune on a new program or get the whole website reprogrammed and, and we just don't make enough money to be able to do this so we, we, we have no idea where we're going to be in July so uh, fingers crossed something will happen and it'll be able to sort it out and if anyone has anyone is an accountant out there and you can advise us please let us know but yeah so um, at the moment you've got until July everything should be fine it's going to actually work out cheaper for you um, you know if you order something 20 pounds or we put 20 pounds on the customs fee you, in theory, have to pay tax on it, but then some countries have limits where you don't have to pay VAT to a certain limit. I think the state is something like £100 or something, you yeah, get a VAT yeah. free, etc. So, anyway, yeah. I have things, seen some of the things going out and going, God, that's cheap. Yeah, things are changing with, with Brexit. This is all the stuff that we've only just found out about. It's only just been announced, you know, we didn't know this beforehand. Uh, so, all those people who voted Brexit, yeah, thanks a lot. But I think, uh, actually, I think if you're, yeah, no, I think. For people who are in the EU at the moment, oh, they're, you're probably, they're probably getting a bargain. You are getting an absolute bargain, yeah. You will be getting so a bargain you've got, from... You've yeah. got five months of getting a bargain. Yeah, absolutely. And then and after I don't that, know what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, we'll have to just close down the walking shop, close down the shop entirely and just become manufacturing and just wholesale out to you know, other, other yeah, shops. Yeah. But yeah, we don't know yet. So yeah, that's put me in a really good mood today, as you can imagine. Uh, right, uh, I've got a degree, says Jason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you work in a magic shop. What a yeah. waste that was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's coming very handy, actually, isn't it? Good degree. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 it's got a good degree. Yeah, 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 very handy. Um, Rebecca's there. Rebecca Wolverine. Um, uh, yeah, she was good afternoon. Been looking forward to this all day. Uh, but thank you, Rebecca. Um, uh, I did work hard, says uh, Jason. Uh, Trent says, uh, good morning from Raleigh, um, uh, North Carolina. Um, uh -huh. uh, afternoon, gentlemen, says uh, Alan Rolson. Charlie says, ha ha, only shuffling a bit. Any resources on uh, where to learn stack deck effects that work with any stat, e.g. not just mnemonica? Right, I think, I so um, Aragon's got his stack, which is the one, the last one I learned, um, and the Aronson one, and they're all pretty, in, uh, a lot of them are interchangeable, unless, you, unless some of them are set up for a poker deal or a gambling demonstration, which the Aronson stack's particularly good at. Otherwise, a lot of them are completely interchangeable, but uh, on tap by Dennis Bear, he has got some brilliant stuff with a memorised deck on there. And he's got some and easy stacks, good. like the side stepping stack, that's quite an easy one to learn. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's got, I mean, he's got some stuff that, you know, fooled me, because it, look, it looks like the deck's been shuffled, but really it hasn't. It's amazing stuff. So, um, yeah, check that out. Best stack deck, new deck order. There you, there you go. go. Easily remember that. Easy remember that. Uh, Adam, uh, Adam Wayne Evans says, um, I have a prop with no instructions called Magician's Dream. It's a coin vanished, but no idea how to set it up. Uh, right, if anyone, uh, I'll put it up on the screen there. If anyone knows this effect, please do uh, uh, drop Adam uh, a, a message, because I have no idea, I'm afraid, buddy. Um, Peter Booth says, I've got a degree from School of Hard Knocks. Absolutely. Hoo-ha, school of life. Um, Jeffrey says, uh, Freddie Frinton was uh, the attar of dinner for one. The waiter. He was the waiter. Yes, he was. That's true. And it's funny because I thought it was going to be um, a German or Scandinavian film. I didn't realise it was um, a British film. Oh, is it a British one? Yes, yeah, so it's a British mm. film that is, I think, yeah, so it was subtitled um, for some strange reason. I don't know. I don't know why Europe have embraced it. Uh, but Freddie Flint, Flint can do a, a, a he can yeah he can do a he, fake trip. You sure it's not Freddie Flint off? <laughs> yeah, it was a bit like Freddie Flint off after a few drinks. You like that, did you, Bobo? You like that? She laughed. Um, Andrew Short says a little cooler here in Canada. I can imagine it is actually yeah, probably minus twenty over there. Um, I don't do the cold very well, oh, not at all. Um, uh, I put up with that when I have to, but otherwise, yeah. Jonas is there. Says uh, the movie Alex is talking about is the amateur version of my New Year's Eve. Is a British <laughs> musical classic called Dinner for One and was written by yeah. uh, Laurie Wiley in the 20s. Hello, you want to come and sit on my shoulder today? Are you trying to get further away from Matthew? Is that what it is? 
try to get further away from Mackie. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Grant says, Happy New Year, lads. Thanks again, Alex, for your advice with Card Oracle. Got it. Only thing is it works okay in training mode, but when I go back, it seems to freeze. I've got it installed on my home screen. Any ideas? Uh, not off the top of my head. Um, I'll, I'll That's an like, email thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, drop, drop us an email. Not, not, not good to chat about that on the live. So, yeah. uh, uh, Hans is there. Hans Sunstrom. Hello, Hans. Hope you are well. Uh, he says, Happy New Year to you all. So nice to see the little puppy happily calmly sleeping with no worries in the world. Yeah, happily sleeping now. You want to see him earlier on. When he got in this morning, it's like I've been giving him speed or something. It's yeah. All over the place. In fact, we had great fun. So, if you remember, um, a couple of years ago, we did the um, uh, the uh, the comedy. Um, wow, it was a giveaway, wasn't it? But we did the whole uh, Erlich Brothers thing with the uh, remote control van. Well, um, that little thing with this is absolutely hilarious. We've got some videos. He's basically barking, chasing it around the room. It's brilliant. So today, I bought a little um, uh, ten pound drone, mini drone, be flying it around. He's been chasing the, the drone and barking. It is hilarious. Uh, but yeah, he's very very clever. He's learned many things already. He's only 11 weeks old and he can already sit, um, lie down, uh, stand up, uh, do a spin. Speak. He can bark. Yeah, he can speak. Um, yeah. Gives you a paw. He's learned to uh, sit, to, uh, sorry, to stay. Um, he learns, he knows the word ball and bed and... Yeah, he, fetch, he was fetching, wasn't he? Fetching, eh? yeah. He heals. He's really, really good. Really clever. Uh, Lee Alex uh, says, uh, easiest way to memorise a deck, keep it in fact you already had. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Um, Good call, uh, early. Uh, Brett Davies says, A Happy New Year to you all. Thank you for the fast delivery on my SpongeBob toolkit. It is an incredible purchase. Uh, it is indeed, Brett. Uh, Otto says, Question about uh, Sioma. Is that right? Sioma silks? How shiny are they since they emulate a cotton handkerchief, I mean? Um, oh, well, let's bring it close to the oh, camera, shall we? There you go. That's what it looks like. Uh, a very nice so, little shiny uh, so silk. It's very thin. So, so it, it wouldn't, yeah. It's not very cotton-like at all, but it does look like a regular it's, handkerchief. Yeah, it does look like a handkerchief, yeah. and it's very yeah. thin. So you could probably, I mean, you could get that in a probably in a reasonable size. The secret, by the way, to keeping Aki that quiet is before the live show is to run and rag it outside for about half an hour, and um, yeah. But I mean, I really, I mean, I have to say, I did when I saw these on the Murphy's website. I did really like the idea. Of a magician silk that genuinely looked like yeah absolutely yeah um you know it is very see-through it is a very translucent so you, if you are going to try and hide something behind it be careful you can probably see something like for example if i hold the mouse behind there you can probably see the mouse yeah quite clearly behind there uh yeah you can yeah so you need to be careful that but for vanishes you know for vanishes yeah you? yeah absolutely well, silk to egg is the perfect size of silk to egg yeah it fits in nicely i don't like it yeah. vanishing in fact it's, it's 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 um uh thinner i think than normal silks yeah and very so, well made. I the edges, really like it. The edges are really good as well. Much better than the edges on normal silks. Actually, yeah, you're Much right. Better. Actually, I think they make yeah, they are really well. Yeah. Really well made. Yeah. Yep. Normal silks seem kind of roughed around the edge and. and also, and, I think the quality of the material made. as well. Because that's yeah. not going to, you know, um. It's more like a cross between silk and chiffon. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Darren uh, Rotherham, uh, he says, will you uh, be getting any more science friction invisible decks or should I get a roughing stick by Harry Robson uh, and make my own? Probably just as good. I would say get a roughing stick, uh, make your own. Uh, I'm not being a, a great fan of uh, science friction, which um, they charge a fortune for and is really just an off-the-shelf product that you can buy here in the UK anyway. Um, I think Christian Schneck, whatever, might disagree with you there, Dave. I, I think not, he'll not tell you that they've saying, done some molecular research is, yeah, and engineering. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah, but you know. it's the, I wouldn't mind if they didn't charge you so much for it, but they charge you a fortune for it. Um, I think it's a very, ver I think it's a very versatile idea, though. I think being able to um, rough just one card. Oh, it has its uses. Saves Absolutely. a lot. Yeah, of, yeah. I know a lot of David Regal effects. You, you know, you you have to rough an entire deck. But if you do an invisible like deck out of it, I would say just oh, for an invisible deck. Yeah, yeah. Rough, oh, invis it's stick. overkill for an invisible deck. Yeah, it's not especially to, especially the cost of science fiction. Yeah. Oh no, it, don't get me wrong. It's got its uses, one hundred percent. But for an invisible deck, no. no invisible deck. Actually, I mean, well, we were just we were playing with um, the little brainwave thing, weren't we earlier? But yeah, um, the stick is perfect for an invisible deck. <laughs> Peter Boo says I'm a star on Magic Transcribe. I can imagine I am actually. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Morton says, uh, Happy New Year, guys. Do you know if you'll be stocking Henry House's Magnet? Oh, I've uh, been asked that already. And yes, we will be uh, at some point. Uh, Simon Keane says, I always think of cards like being married for a long time. You need to, a heart to love them, a diamond to marry them, a club to kill them, and a spade to bury them. Oh, I quite like wise that. Wise words, wise words, yeah. Um, Danny Marsh says, Rick Lax has a superb downloads on Memdex. I uh, managed 
to order in a few hours slowly, but it's brilliant. I managed the order yeah. in a few hours, yeah. Uh, stack deck, easy to use. Sai Stebbins says Hans. Uh, Tom Cocker says, uh, hi guys, hope you're all well. Happy New Year. Uh, oh, bloody hell, there's uh, an essay there. Um, oh, pleased to meet you, Tom. Here we go. Ah, uh, thank you again, Alex, for your extra help in learning how to perform politically, politically correct. It's brilliant. Uh, I also much, purchased a Sans Mines ring box last week and had the idea of combining the two tricks. I borrow someone's ring and place it into the ring box and get them to hold it so I can't get the ring. Can't get the ring. Yeah. Uh, I then perform politically correct to reveal their force card. Luckily, my force card is a two of diamonds. Yeah. So once the card ah. segment of the trick is done, I mention how diamond how, how diamonds are commonly found mm -hmm. on rings, mm -hmm. and I get them to check the ring box, only for them now yeah. to find yeah. it empty. And then I say, not in that box, the other box, indicating towards an empty card box. Uh, the cards were previously right. stored in, which is now magically got the ring inside. Oh. Thought it would be a nice extra kick of the ending. What a great little routine nice there. Nice little routine. So, yeah, uh, very yeah, good thank idea. Thank you for that, Tom. Well yeah. done, Tom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now everyone's going to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Happy New Year, guys, uh, says um, uh, Ken Francis. Uh, Jason says, yes, we'll be at some point uh, stocking the, uh, um, uh, the, the magnet. magnet, yeah, magnet thing. Um, uh, I have been in contact with Henry and the order has been placed. We're just waiting for the order to be processed. Um, oh, yeah. How's Boba getting on with Aki, says Andy. Um, they start to get on well, and Bobo starts to get closer to Aki, and then um, Bobo will kind of fly away, and then Aki will go, oh, look, something's moving fast, and he'll chase Bobo, and then Bobo will get freaked out by being chased, and it all goes back to square one again, and it gets a bit hectic. But at some point, Aki will calm down, and they'll just be friends. I'm sure they will. Uh, Sean Mann says, memorising them is easy. Keeping them in your long-term memory is the issue. Indeed, yeah. I said, I learnt it, and I used it for about a month when I come back, then stopped using it, and two months later, I forgot most of it. Let's talk about something, shall we? Um, peas and shells. Have you mentioned the peas? Have you mentioned those? Yes, yet? the peas and shells. So uh, Jason's made this little video, actually. Uh, well, let's watch Jason's video yeah, first, yeah. and then we'll talk about the peas and shells. So uh, over to Jason at home in his um, prop dog T-shirt. I'm oh, imagining no, that's right. No. I'm imagining he's probably cleaned up the house nicely. He's probably got his bandana. Absolutely, down. He's yeah. probably got a nice he'd backdrop. He'd have made all the effort to get a prop dog t-shirt and, and, you know, a nice clean can, shirt. Won't, and, won't be yeah, showing yeah, his, yeah, his yeah, uh, yeah, man boobs. No, no, don't no be doing that. No man boobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not and, on Jason. And, and, and he's definitely not wearing a shirt that looks like it's been turned inside out. But, um, yeah, uh, let's go over to Jason uh, for the show. Hello, Jason. <laughs> Thank you, Dave and Alex. Hope you're all well. Hello, Bobo. Hello, Aki. I miss you all. Greatly. Uh, I'm coming to you from the kitchen today because, for obvious reasons, I'm not, uh, I can't make it into the shop because I have to get public transport, and at this point of time, it's not worth the risk. So, uh, I'm doing a review from home for you. Today, uh, in case you hadn't noticed, I mean, where have you been if you haven't, we are talking about shells, and not just any shells, we're talking about the Michael Stirler shells that have just come in to us yesterday from Germany. Very, very exciting. Uh, I am a massive, massive fan of Michael's work, and amazingly, he doesn't sell these to anyone else but Prop Dog. So I'm very, very thank you, th thankful for Michael for uh, for allowing us to sell his beautiful things. So what have we got? We have got uh, two different sets from Michael, and I've got my School for Scoundrel shells here, so I can do a little comparison for you. But we'll talk about the big ones first. These are the Bison shells. I'm going to hold them up so you can see them, and as you can see. They are absolutely amazing in terms of their craftsmanship, their painting, their design. They are stunning. These are handcrafted by Michael. Each one is handcrafted by Michael. Um, they take them a long time to make and they are amazing. They look like real walnut shells. They include everything that you'd expect from a pro, sh pro shell set. That is really hard to say. You get the, uh, the Channing dip, you get the notch and everything that makes game even more deceptive for uh, for your audience that's all included in these shells with the big shells you also get two giant 14 millimeter peas and it takes the game that's normally a very very close up very intimate thing which obviously isn't good for this time of uh, this time of existence uh, to making it more of a stage or parlor effect so it does actually make it better for uh, for the current climate it works, uh, the shells handle and work in exactly the same way. The bigger P does let you do extra things uh, like palming and all that kind of stuff. So you can, you can play with that and bring that into your routines. But, but ultimately it works in exactly the same way as any normal shell routine. Um, and they are flawless, they are absolutely fantastic. The big shells are 89.99, which may have some of you reclining in shock. 
but when you know as much about the shells as I do and you've had as many sets as I've had from the very 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 cheap Vernet ones which are perfectly fine if you want to learn it through to the school for scoundrels uh, finally up to Michael's I agree with all of the other uh, reviews that say that Michael's are the best in the world they really really are quick word on the peas the peas are very different to the school for scoundrels ones they are um, I don't think sticky is quite the right word they're, they're tacky which makes the moves incredibly incredibly simple so most people will play the shell game and just do a normal uh, a normal move like that and that's all they'll do which is fine that's what Pop Haven does it's what Chef Anton does nobody really goes that much further but if you are into uh, the kind of thing like using multiple peas or back clipping these peas make all of those extra moves much much easier for you to do it's also really really good for your peace of mind because you know you're not going to drop or flash it's really really great they are they are amazing they are tacky to the touch as i say and if they do get um fluffy or you know they get debris sticking to them you just wash them under cold water and they'll be good as new so that is the bisons with the 14 millimeter peas as i said before 89.99 uh, the, the other great thing about prop dog selling them now is obviously you don't have to get them from Michael directly, uh, which you had to before, so you can take advantage of our free shipping uh, worldwide with orders over £50. Quick prop dog plug, I would recommend a uh, prop dog hard back pad for the shell game. It's perfectly padded to do all the moves and if you do want a pad like mine, I got uh, Mel, our wonderful prop and pad maker, to put my material on the pad the other way to the way it normally goes on. So the nap on mine runs left to right as opposed to up and down. So I found that I'd much rather have the shells leaving a mark or leaving a track this way so people can track where they've been rather than just tracking up and down. So thankfully Mel managed to do that for me and it's not that much more work. It's just laying the material in a different way. So if you do want a pad that's, in my opinion, perfect for the shell game, Drop us, uh, drop us an email or put a comment on your pad order just to have the, the material with the nap running left to right or right to left, as you wish. So, gold diggers. These are the ones that we have most of. We have 10 sets of these. We have five sets of the bisons. We've already sold one of these, so get in fast. 10 sets of the, of the gold diggers, and these are akin to the School for Scandals set. Now, I'm just going to hold them up so you can see a size comparison. So, they're very similar in size, but you can see far 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 more detail and craftsmanship has gone into uh, Michael's one so that's it for you scoundrels if you have the scoundrel set that is no in no means a bad set what I would recommend is buying a set of Michael's peas because then you can do all of the great moves with um, with the set that you already own so we sell these we're selling these in bags of two for 3 99 so you can get Michael's best peas uh, that's what they're known as on the website and, uh, and you can use them with any existing shell game set. Just like before, really, guys, amazing quality on the gold diggers. These, these are your standard size, I'd say, for a P and shell worker, but absolutely immaculate, high quality, beautiful craftsmanship. Uh, what more can I say? They're $74.99 for the gold diggers. So if you're into your P and shell or you want to get into it and you don't want to go through about 15 different sets like I have, just buy the best and you'll never ever regret it. So that is my review of uh, the Sterler shells. Thank you once again to Michael for allowing us to sell your beautiful items. Hopefully we'll do so with, uh, with passion and pride. I sound like Boris Johnson. Um, thankfully I don't look too much like him. Uh, one thing before we go, Alex, I really, really appreciate the paintings. Alex has been sending me, uh, sending me pictures through the post. Uh, he's missing me obviously. I don't really know what they're supposed to be. This one here, I have no idea. I think it might be some sort of, um, it was like a raw shark test or or a picture of the COVID strain, just to, just to remind me to keep safe. Um, this one is a bit more obvious. I think he's trying to show me Aki, uh, the dog. So Alex, thanks very much. But um, yeah, I, can we just forget the pictures from now, mate? I'll, I'll see you. I'll see you very very soon. All right, back to you in the studio. <laughs> thanks, Jason. Um... <laughs> What you don't know is those pictures that Alex did are, are the best of the best. We had to pick the best ones to take because the, the worst ones, well, I mean, they were terrible. You couldn't even make out that it was accurate. Well, I had to get, I had to get yeah, Mel yeah, to do yeah. some of the colouring yeah. in. To you be woke honest, up a bit, like have you? 
You work in a bit. <laughs> I wasn't going to say, Joe, though, I, I thought you'd spent um, a fair bit of money on his um, Zoom show kit. Hadn't That's you? right, so all that lovely background you got and all that set I'm up. Pleased, and then, uh, yeah, and pleased then, you, uh, then, pleased you were yeah, using your studio yeah, yeah. there to make it yeah. look like you're actually in the kitchen. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Remarkable. Yeah, yeah so it's all green screen, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's actually wearing his blocked up shirt, it's special effects to make it look like he's not, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, yeah, thanks for that, uh, Jason. That's all. I have cool. to say that so, they yeah, did yeah. come in. They did come in. I know nothing about um, oh, about the free shell game apart from I, I, I have seen every type of shell that we sell, and um, I do like. I, I'm not sure about the big ones, uh, the bison ones, but these, which are the regular sized ones, whichever he's calling them, they are beautiful. They yeah. they are superb, and but, the peas are are different. And really good, and they come. I think Jason mentioned they come in uh, red, white, and green, and they're selling like hotcakes. So if you want just the peas, uh, you might have to hurry up. I think we should sell hotcakes too. In that case, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, I think part of the painted thing is, uh, is Jason's way of getting back at Alex because we did wind Jason up. So Jason, being at home, wasn't here when the shells arrived. And as Jason's been dealing with this um, personally, it's his little baby. When they arrived, Alex decided to tell him that they were absolutely terrible. And what we received um, is not the, the original ones we bought from him that we, we played with in the shop. And what we got was basically 3D printed um, brown colored dodgy shells. And then um, I, I heard overheard this conversation. So come storming over and Alex's like, shh, it's a wind up. Line. So of course I went in and they're saying, yeah, they're terrible. Worst things I've ever seen. And then Jason says, send me a photo. So we're like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, put the phone down. And then we're quickly looking online to find some really bad pictures of shells. <laughs> and we did find a video with somebody who 3D printed them and managed to get a screenshot and send it off to Jason, who was about to phone up the guy and give give him hell. But um, he didn't, yeah. So um, you woke up, buddy. You woke up. Um, very quickly, by the way, uh, as you know, we sell the Jerry O'Connell levitation device. And uh, in the past, we always provide caps with them. And then a few people recommended some caps for us that were really loud caps. And we had those caps. I think we got some here somewhere. Uh, we have some of those really loud caps, but we couldn't get them in wholesale, couldn't get them cheap enough to sell to you guys. So we just recommended them. Uh, however, uh, there's been a worldwide shortage of caps and we've not been able to get caps for a long time. And finally today, uh, one of our wholesalers we use, uh, a toy wholesaler, came back and said, we've got some of these caps in and they're slightly different and they are brilliant. I mean, um, uh, they're here. We've got we bought loads enough to last and they are so loud it's unbelievable so just to give you a little demonstration i um i did a wind up with alex earlier on i showed him how loud they were didn't they were work really loud. didn't work didn't work didn't um, get me at all I, I, listen to him. I, I secretly hid one under his book and it went off and it went you know loud. I, I missed it i popped that through the mail at the time so i missed the reaction but apparently made you jump uh, so these are the caps. Don't Made worry. Jump and swear. Don't worry about Aki and Bobo. They've both been acclimatized to fireworks. So I've done a lot of work on them, acclimatizing them, so they won't be scared. But just to show you, I mean, make a maybe make a little jump. But here we go. This is how loud they are. See, really, really loud. I mean, my ears are ringing after that. Yeah, I mean, these two are used to it now. But um, yeah, that is a hell of a loud rang, isn't it? I'm not sure health and I'm not sure yeah. that's allowed health and safety wise. I, I reckon that's about that is. I don't know how loud it is your side, but yeah, the, our side. I mean, yeah, my ears are ringing. That's really, yeah, yeah, really, that really loud. Has got him really on my loud. Ears. Yeah. So um, we've got those. Uh, they're not on the website yet. They will be on there very, very shortly. Um, uh, and if you want them as replacement caps, uh, if you want to continue your winding up with your levitation device, you can do so. Where are you going? Hey, buddy. Aki. Right then. There you go. So, uh, right, on with the, uh, the comments. Uh, oh, speaking of Aki, um, Ifti. It said Aki is also brother in Arabic. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Well, that's Hello. quite nice. I call yeah, that brother. It is. Well, it, I like it, that a lot. Spelled differently. It's also here in Spanish, isn't it? Aki. Um, so I could be saying uh, Aki, and then some Spanish people say, oh, he's calling his dog. So, uh, hey, buddy, you woken up. You're going to show off. You're going to show off. Okay, where there. Here we go. Speak, Alex. I will. I will speak. Right, so we've got Happy Little New 20. Year from Monty Holder. Happy New Year from the big state of Texas. What's uh, this, Aki? Sit. Sit. Good boy. And speak. Speak. Louder. Speak. Can you hear that? It's a bit of, a, bit of a, a, a wuss growl, but speak. That's better. Good boy. There you go. Clever dog. Uh, oh, yeah, let's do one more very quickly. Aki. Okay. <laughs> Aki, spin. Oh, it's a bit tricky on there. That's a bit. Yeah, me bad. Aki, Aki, spin, spin. It's difficult on there, isn't it? Spin. Yeah, it's quite. On, I, spin. Think, I think it's quite awkward on there. Yeah. Spin one more time. <coughs> on, spin. You can do it. Uh, he's struggling. Spin. 
Yeah, he's trying to. Yeah, good boy. That's good enough. There you go. Clever little dog. Right, okay. Um, on with the comments. It's a magic show, not a dog show. Ah. <laughs> it looks like crap. Um, it could be crafts. Happy New Year uh, from the big state of Texas, says Monty. Um, oh, we love Texas. I absolutely love Texas. If I could move anywhere in the state, it would be Austin. Absolutely. Uh, Theo says, drop finger in the box. Um, hi all, says Kevin Peel. Don says, uh, Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year to you too, Don. Anoop says, hello, guys. Hope you're all safe and doing well. Um, and Happy New Year. Alprendo says, uh, thank you uh, for the large AOL. Uh, well, Happy New Year. Right, and happy to you New too, year, Al. Al. Um, Stacey said, you need to change your ringtone. <laughs> uh, Cash is there. Hello, Cash. He says, morning, folks. Dave, Bobo and Dog. Hello, Aki. Happy New Year. Say hello to Cash in a Cash way, Aki. Oh. So, uh, Cash, this is for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone uh, who used to watch the show when Cash was here will know what that is all about. Uh, I agree, says Jason. Alan Robinson, uh, when I was 20, uh, with uh, an old-style ring flight, I did launch a ring across the room, um, uh, and it was never found again. Thankfully, it was a costume jewelry and easy to replace. Alan, dude. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that's How uh, long was it show, before yeah. you performed ring flight again after that? That's what I want to know. Hmm. A lot of people have used to do ring flight because they're so scared. But um, if you've if you've been too scared to ever do ring flight, then you're missing out. One of the things that makes ring flight so powerful is the fact it's the personal ring; it belongs to them. I mean, if I bought out my own ring and did it my own ring, it's like, oh, that's a, a fun trick. But they're not going to believe it's the, the, the ring. But when you do it with their ring, it's like, what? How? It's I such an amazing. Anyone who does it knows exactly what I'm speaking about. Amazing reaction. And if you, I think, yeah. um, everyone I know who's been to a wedding who then tells me, oh, there was a magician at the wedding. Yeah. There are, they either mention the Omni deck or the, their ring was on his keys. Yeah. Those are like the two tricks that are always mentioned. I know a lot of magicians are doing them, but they also obviously have that power to stay in someone's mind and stuff like that. So, I mean, well worth doing. The greatest compliment I ever got in magic was from Ring Flight, and it's when a woman says, that's not my ring. I want your details. So sorry, that's not my ring. I do not believe it's my ring. It, it doesn't even—it yeah. doesn't even feel right on my hand. I want your details, and I get my jeweler to check this out. And she took my details, and later really? on, yeah, 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 yeah. A couple of days later, <laughs> she phoned back. Um, she phoned me up, and she said, "I'm so, so sorry. That was definitely my ring. I, I, I was just so amazing." Uh, for oh, me, wow. as much hassle yeah. as that caused, and she was really funny about it. Took all my details, well, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, wanted my phone number and address and everything. Uh, it was one of the greatest compliments I had, and she was Oy. very, very humble afterwards. So uh, yeah, very good. Um, uh, Cash says, uh, "I guess Jason is hidden around." The corner um uh a bit further than that he's about six miles away um at home uh don says uh oh it's real i thought it was stuffed toy no Aki's not real although he's well, I've quickly gone running around the car park for a bit <laughs> wear him out again uh stacy says uh you need to get me a ring box <laughs> um i've got one for you stacy you know, i would hand deliver it but yeah you're just you know a few thousand miles away too far uh by a few thousand i mean twelve thousand miles too far um <laughs> Otherwise, I would, uh, Stacey. Uh, Andy Tingley says we're getting a, a, a Shih Tzu Poo, but only six weeks old at the mo. Ah, uh, a Shih Tzu Poo. Oh, what's, nice. what's a Shih Tzu Poo? Um, a, a poodle cross um, a Shih Tzu. Must yeah, be really small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah everything, everyone's crossing everyone with the poodles at the moment. It's because all don't, well, don't malt and have hypoallergenic. Yeah, you yeah. want to play, don't you? You want to play. Yeah, still teething at the moment. Um, uh, Aki is also Swedish for I've got... A shish boat. What a coincidence, says Jason. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Oh, just wait till it's done. You won't be saying that, will he? No. He'll be saying super shit boat. <laughs> <laughs> Expensive uh, people, shit boat, though. People have said the same about you, Don. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daniel says, uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year to you, too, Daniel. Um, uh, annoying, but quick question. What has changed when ordering from oh, the EU? Go. Uh, I will still order from my favourite magic shop either way. Cheers, Pop Dog. Um, hopefully you heard what I said earlier, Daniel, because I know there is quite a bit of a delay on here. But if you didn't hear, uh, at the moment, until July, it's going to be cheaper to order from us than it is normally. Uh, but after July, I don't know when the earth's going to happen to uh, us or Pop Dog or, or, or ordering or anything. But hopefully we'll, we'll sort it all out and we shall kind of continue as normal-ish. Um, Good day all, says Stephen Lovering. Um, uh, Dave, what sort of dog uh, uh, have you got as I'm looking now I've retired? This is a cockapoo. So those of you that know Stan Airy, one of our regular customers, often here on the live, he's not, he's not here today or at the moment, um, uh, it turns out that Stan and his wife Andrea are breeders and um, they very kindly put me on the waiting list for a, uh, a young pooch and uh, got updates um, uh, on a regular basis, even when he was born, uh, and, and many times a day, every day, until I was oh, eventually I think, able to I think you ought to say that they are outstanding 
breeders. They are absolutely uh, remarkable. Oh, unbelievable. I did, I mean, unbelievable, yeah. Aki has been incredible, the, um, but the, also the vet was been impressed with the pack oh, that you've got. The, the vet, vetting Dave had to go through. I mean, the know. vet was blown away by the, um, uh, the, 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 the effort the breeders had gone into beforehand. Uh, the fold I got with all the details and everything that went on and all the training they do and all the, the socialization. The, they, they put a lot of work into the, the noise and, you know, they were playing fireworks to them from a young age as well as ones like the work I've done with them. So yeah, um, outstanding. Um, oh, hold on, behold, Stan's there, look. Yep, Stan is there. Uh, wait, oh, I've lost my, uh, I've lost my place, but I actually scrolled up by accident. But hang on, let's go down quickly. So good deal. Well, um, Nigel Quinn, um, uh, those Michael Stoll shells look nice. Danny Marshes, uh, that routine for the Trop Cup, the TCC exclusive for Kickstarter backers only. Uh, oh, oh, that's interesting. There you right. go. Well, there you go. Uh, Steve Lex says, love my table. Thanks, Dave. You're most welcome, uh, Steve. Uh, and thank you for, um, uh, uh, well, showing us a table. Yeah, we'll, we'll get some of them made and, uh, and uh, we'll get one up in the shop uh, at some point as we... Uh, we said, but I'm glad you like it, mate. Uh, I want one, says James Hallwood. Uh, Jason says, that's the understatement of the year. Nigel, you'll find more later. And there's Stan. So Stan said, look at the dog. Stan, here's your little buddy. That's Uncle Stan, look. Uncle Stan, your other dad, your surrogate dad. There you are. He's doing well, mate. He's doing well, aren't you, buddy? Yeah. Wave. Yeah. Just want to wave to Stan. Go and have a wave. There you go. Right. Stay there. Look for Stan. Do me proud. Do me proud. Uh, short watching. man says uh, unlike some other leather chop cups you actually receive the tcc one uh. cough dave forest cough i see right yes you'll actually receive the tcc one yeah yeah um charlie robinson says seeing as blackpool is cancelled cut about that um uh, i'm gonna place a big order with you on the weekend oh the wow weekend it would have been oh that's a nice idea we could wow we could yeah yeah been. maybe we should have like we a blackpool sale a blackpool sale Get rid of all the stock so we don't have to worry about the VAT for, for the, for the, for the, yeah. um, the Brexit rules in, in, in July. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Charlie. We'll look forward to seeing that. But yeah, we should definitely do something for the Blackpool weekend, I think. We'll have yeah. a little think about that. There we go. Uh, Christopher says, uh, is there a good follow-up to the Vanishing Ring, like Nesta Wallets, etc., for reappearing a ring or coin? Yeah, um, check out my ring routine, um, the, the, the Plus Wallet. So uh, where I do my ring routine is to vanish it on my Ring Fight Revolution, and I bring it back out again, and then I put it into a wallet. So if I'm a walk around, I put the wallet on the floor, and I say, keep your eye on that, make sure you go nowhere near it, and the ring vanishes the second time appears in there. If I'm at a table, it's in my pocket, or I'll give it to a spectator to hold. Um, so you can incorporate that, um, or you could do... Uh, a ring flight well, I say you do a ring flight and then ring box um, or you could do a ring box and an envelope or as you said ring on string or you could do a number of different ways you've got the handkerchief where uh, any ring by Richard Simons yeah. you can vanish it that way there's a ton of routines on rings to do um, but yeah there's loads of them there's yeah. a really uh, John Cornelius has one called My Lady's Ring where you actually you know um, fail to find the ring which is quite a, it's a good comedy good comedy version um, of a vanished ring well, while looking at in his book. The ring effect I like to do, um, well, not so much now, but when I was just performing, um, I used to do a lot of cruises, being in London, a lot of cruises on the Thames. So there's always some party going on on one of the Thames cruises, you know, like the Silver Sturgeon. You guys out there who do these ones will know exactly what I mean. Um, and uh, one of my favourite things to do on the, the boats, especially when you're on top deck, not when you're down below, when you're on top deck, is to do the gag with the penny, uh, which you'll know what I mean. Uh, you have a penny uh, in one hand, and um, well, you actually have two pennies. Yeah. So I, I said to somebody, can I borrow a ring? Um, yeah, no problem, get the ring like that. And then you just put the ring, very nice, you switch it, and you just throw it above, uh, overboard, you plop down, but of course you're throwing the penny, okay? And they go, oh my God, he said, don't worry, it was just a penny. I switched it and you bring it back your hand and you show a penny in your hand and you go, whoa, like that. And the, the, the reactions you get from that, people scream, run to the edge, oh my God. Uh, and it's brilliant. And that's a no, don't worry. On my car keys, I've got a backup and it's on there. So uh, that's a great one I used to do. And the other thing, which I used to like to do, I never ever did it, I tried hundreds of times, is card and ceiling under the bridges. So the Ooh. average t average Thames cruise goes under about 20 or 30 bridges. Oh, no, I yeah. don't know. It's about, it's about 10 bridges, I think. Um, Excuse you. Uh, and whenever you go into a bridge, I'm outside performing. I say, look, there's a bridge coming up. I'm going to try this trick. I've never, I've never managed to do it. We're going to try it for the first time. I get oh. everyone around and I try it and I never do it. So then I go downstairs and I do it downstairs or if there's yeah. a little deck, I do it under the deck or something on there. But I've tried it dozens of times. Now, it's either the bridges are too high, so the higher boats you get closer, or you can't get the cards high enough. So I've tried putting two decks together to make it higher to go up. Still has never done it. And about three times I've hit the bridge, 
but usually it's damp and the moisture right, under there, yeah, the wax yeah. doesn't stick and goes down. But if anyone ever wants a challenge, see if you can do it. I've never known anyone to do it, and I've been under the bridges dozens of times. There's no card stock up there where there is isn't. Well, maybe maybe that's what we're doing world, on the Blackpool weekend. We're on my boat going up, yeah. going under bridges <laughs> whilst you're throwing cards up. Yeah, but the local bridge in Richmond doesn't count or, <laughs> or Hampton. It's got to be one of the big bridges in the centre, like London. Well, I don't bridge, think my boat's going to get that far. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're waffling on. Let's get on with stuff. Uh, let's talk about something. What, what, we got, what else have we got to talk about? So, um, Devil's Bandana? Oh, yeah, Devil's Bandana. So, this is. Speaking, uh, speaking of um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Lee Alex, um, this is uh, one of. Uh, uh, is Lee well, one, isn't it? Yeah, it is Lee. Well, yeah, Lee, yeah, if you've yeah, got yeah, anything yeah. you want to say about I this, about I was, yeah, I was yeah. impressed with this. So, uh, someone rang up about actually. Um... There's been a few Devil's Hanks before out there, and they're okay, but they're just very standard, very plain. Uh, and to be honest, if there's something inside it, quite often the plain. Uh, plainness of the silk can give away the weird shape where Alex has got around that um, and it's also a very magical looking uh, bandana yeah. as well. Yeah, so, um, so, so I mean the TCC one again is probably the best until this one. Um, it looks great. It looks great. And it looks great. The patterns are brilliant because I said they hide anything that can yeah. be put inside it and especially with the different lines. I don't know the way that was done on purpose. Uh, and it's uh, also not, got yeah. um, the things in the corners so you know which way up it is. Ah, nicely yeah, hidden yeah, yeah, there yeah, yeah, so yeah. you've got a tactile way of seeing it is and if i put something in something as heavy as uh, a phone and watch lee's trailer as well um he's got a, a lovely oi, little way oh stop that you um you know aki likes it so that's it with some that's with my yeah, phone that's, that's brilliant isn't it i mean so. that is really really good yeah let me, let me do that close to the camera yeah don't, 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 wait, wait, wait. feel 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 there you go see Hang on. Look at that. So, so that is yet. a phone inside it. How amazing is that? So, uh, yeah. You can shake it. Yeah, nothing. Brilliant. And great for um, uh, uh, producing as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, and so, anyway, yeah, no, so well, well, done, well done with that. Yeah, uh, twenty six ninety nine. a really good price as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that is now the leading um, uh, devil's, uh, well, it's a, the handkerchief, the devil's bandana, devil's chief. So thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can't say yeah. it's, a, it's a leading devil's handkerchief. Cause it's not a handkerchief. It's not really a, a bandana. Uh, it is a bandana, but yeah, you, you get what I mean. Okay. Uh, uh, right. We've got uh, oh well, subtle card creations. So this um, is Nick Trust's uh, new book, number eight. Um, and I've had a quick look at it. Um, I did learn the first trick in the book, um, which was surprising. Actually, I might. Oh, right. Shall we go? Shall yeah, we get yeah, the first yeah. trick in the book? Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to see if I can get the close-up cam on it again? Uh, let's try it. I've I plugged it in while we're watching uh, Jason. Let's see if it works again. Uh, where's the iPhone close-up? Is it going to work? Yes, it's working. There we are. Right. Okay. So this is the, the book. Um, you get a fair few effects in it, as you can see. And this is what I really like. This is, this is going back to the books that I remember of, of old, where you have a truckload of tricks and you just work your way through them. This is this is why magic became my hobby, to be honest. You'd work through them, you'd try and come up with the patter, the lines, and try and make them entertaining, and that was all the fun for me. Um, so you don't get, the tricks are explained, you know, they've got nice diagrams. There's not as much, uh, they are quite procedural, but they also do, inc do include more slights than I thought. So you've got things like, you know, double lifts, diminishing lifts, um, and little things like that. Um, the odd false display. Um, right, you're going to give it a go? I'll give it a go. Give it a go, right. Let's put Aki down just for a second. Right, Aki, stay down there. There you go. Right. Okay. So this is obviously card magicians. Um, we like to cheat at cards, don't we? You all know we can. Do you? Oh, yeah. So uh, I've got here, um, oh, I've got here uh, five cards. And these are uh, the cards that I normally deal myself. I don't like to be greedy to start off with, so although I have my first card I give myself is an ace. Yeah, let's turn this pad over. You go that and turn over. There you go. Nice no, pad. The first card I give myself is usually an ace, but it's quite important um, not to be too greedy uh, to stand out as a cheat. So um, the next card I give myself um, is one of the queens. The, uh, the third card. I give myself is one of the other queens. I think you can probably see where this is going now. Uh, next card I give myself is a queen, and the last card is a queen. So I give myself the four queens and an ace. So that's quite that's quite a good hand, not too suspicious. But of course, what can happen is you might be up against another magician, in which case you probably want something 
a bit better. Oop. In which case, uh, I turn it into a straight flush. Nice. Ah. There you go, that's the first one in the book. Um, right, let's go back on the main cam. Uh, there you go, right. So they're quite nice. That, so the first the chapter in that book was sort of quick openers. Um, and they're quite nice, quite nice, quite easy to learn, not too difficult. And just sort of fun, it's sort of partly what got me into card magic, was sort of playing with these sort of tricks and just going, oh, that's quite visual. Um, I did show that to someone last night and they were like, oh. Yeah, well that's been, I mean, the card creations, sort of card creations have been really popular. We've sold loads of the other volumes over the years, so um, uh, yeah, and people keep coming back to buy the new volume, so that must be a good set. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, okay, right, let's catch up with a few more comments. Um, where's Aki gone? Aki, come in, come here. She's uh, hiding under the couch at the moment. Uh, she, she seems to like going under the couch, doesn't she? Just uh, she's got a little spot he. under there. He, 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 he. Sorry, she, he. Yeah, there we go. Uh, right, you're happy he's gone for a bit, aren't you? It's yeah. all right. It's a non-binary world now, Dave. You can, uh, it's fine. They. Oh, hello, they. We're going to get. We're going <laughs> to get ourselves on magic transcribed. We're we going to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Christopher Bartham. Uh, sorry, Bartham says. Um, these are a good follow-up to the vanishing. Oh, we've done that one already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Adam Evans uh, says, uh, with the Chop Cup TCC, only gave out that routine. Oh, we've done that one already. Uh, Sandy says, uh, I've got a couple of wooden Mac Magic production boxes from the 90s. Uh, the paint is starting to chip off. Looks like the same sort of paint you see on Stratospheres and other standard kids' magic props. Uh, what sort of paint would you recommend uh, I use to touch them up and repaint them? Um, difficult without seeing it, Sandy, but I would probably just go with a regular acrylic paint, to be honest. Um, a lot of them are painted and then they have uh, like a clear coat over the top of them. It really depends. Uh, I'd have to see them, to be honest, to, to recommend them. But more than likely, just a regular acrylic paint or just a spray paint, if you can match them. You're probably better off just sanding the whole thing down uh, and re-spraying re it, to be honest, with any uh, any kind of paint and then putting a new uh, layer of clear coat. We can do that for you if you want, Sandy. We can always um, get Mel on it, my prop maker. She's an expert with uh, paints and matching colours and stuff. Uh, yeah, do just drop us an email. Uh, Andy Tingley says... Um, uh, who will know about downloads? Yeah, exactly. Who would know? Um, uh, somebody out there must. Uh, Hi, Pop Doggers says um, Robert Van Buren and uh, Aki and Bobo. Yeah. Um, forgot you were losing track of the days being home forgot on the break. Were... Ah. Aha, I wish How I can you forget about break. losing track? He's, he's a watch man, isn't he? You should have. I, mean, <laughs> I, I picture yeah. your whole your whole house surrounded by clocks. Yeah. Oh, anyone should be in track yeah, of time, yeah. Robert. Come on. Yeah. Some watch maybe you are. Yeah. Um, as for Brexit, move prop dog to Sweden, says Jonas. Oh. Do you know what? Uh, we've discussed the fact that we could move abroad. The only only downside is that I have a, um, a military pension and I would lose my pension. Do you know is, what? I've uh, been uh, learning Swedish as well. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Go on. I can't say. I can't say anything. Uh. I can say. I can say. I can. I can tell you now, Jonas, that I have a het flickervan. My bad. My bad. Which is my, my, my which made my Christmas and New Year very happy with my het flickervan. I learned a few Swedish words about 30 years ago to impress a girl, and I've completely forgotten what they were. <laughs> uh, Amber says, I voted Remain. It's odd to me that the people voted to leave are, st uh, are still here. When do they emigrate? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The thing is, most people just thought, oh, yeah, that'd be a good idea to, you know, to, to vote uh, leave. They didn't really think about how it would impact a lot of other businesses and stuff because things weren't laid out in stone. I mean, people didn't know the kind of things that we're just learning about now that they're just deciding and uh, yeah it's gonna mess up a lot of companies a lot of companies are gonna go bankrupt uh, and under well, I think I mean I really want to hear what Boris Johnson was saying back then when he was uh, mm. he was advocating for Brexit and what he's going to be saying over the next few years when he's casually apologizing yeah. for the fact that it's all gone to pop well, my mum wrote a vote to leave. Um, so mine. Uh, and I said, why? She goes, oh, because we're British and it's going to be good to be British again and, and all the immigrants yeah, will yeah. grow and, and all the products we buy will be British products and, and they won't be from China and everywhere yeah. else. I'm like, mum, that's not the way it works. But yeah, that's what she, uh, she understood. Uh, yeah, uh, my yeah. mum's my mum's furious with all the, well, should we get on magic transcribed? I thought about mine. Yeah. <laughs> all those Polish people coming over here, fixing things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Buggers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. It's um, it's it's a fa it's a it's a well, it's a very divisive thing, isn't it? But I think the parts of the country really are are actually less European than London. I think, and we forget that. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, Savannah says, uh, yeah, um, f all the Brexiteers and closet racists. Um, Eddie Grant says, I've got the police record walking on the moon. 
I've got a police record. Oh yeah, I've got oh. a police record. Yeah, walking yeah. through. Yeah, sorry. I, I, Very I, I, good. I wasn't aware I'm reading a joke. You should you should put joke beforehand, Eddie, so I can read it and get the context right. Uh, Rob Van Buren says, uh, "How is the boat, Alex? Yeah, how is the boat, Alex? It's all right. So actually, is so it still afloat? It's still afloat. Oh, have you fallen in again since? I haven't fallen in again. I'll oh. tell you what though. Uh, so why haven't I'm, you fallen in? Well, because when I first you been there. No, I have been. There. I have been there. <laughs> but when I first got on the boat, I was quite casual and gung ho about getting onto it. <laughs> Right. Now, obviously, having buggered my leg, <laughs> exactly, I am like an old man getting onto it. I am, I am clinging on for dear life as I step across Would the gap. Would you like me to put like a disabled ramp yeah, going up? It, feels like that. it does feel like that. Um, but there should be some progress next week. So someone's coming in to spray the inside with all insulation. Uh, and so then the interior can start going back in. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Awesome. Um, by the end of the month. Uh, I'll be ready um, to sell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you know that. Uh, Peter Booth says uh, dinner for one uh, was featured on QI. Ah, there you go. Oh. People know about it. Uh, Chris Watts says, hey, says uh, that's frustrating news regarding Brexit. I hope some accountants are hearing you and able to help. Any accountants listening to Prop Dog needs you. Can't imagine the world without Prop Dog. Yeah, I mean, my accountant phoned me today and she was trying to explain it, but she said it's also new. They're not sure of all the details. She'll send something over when they've got it. But um, even, even so, it, it's more... The, the the amount of work that we'll need to be doing. What people don't realise is that we only make about 10% uh, profit on nearly all items in here that aren't our own. So any, any of our items from Murphy is such a small amount of profit. So after eight years of business, I'm still only paying myself £700 a month. We can't afford, I can't, we don't make enough money to pay myself anymore. So where people think I'm driving around in a Ferrari and super rich, it's not that way. I mean, we struggle to stay open. We're running a walking shop in London, so profits are so low i mean you wouldn't believe how much our rent and bills are it's just crazy so um to have to worry about a whole new accounting system and we already pay 500 quid a month on accounting at the moment we're probably looking about two grand a month on accounting with the new brexit thing if, if things are going to be like um we've heard but we'll see what happens we'll, we'll, just, we'll see i mean we may have a bigger customer base by then and we may have more of our own products which will make us enough money to cover it there may be new rules and maybe people may petition the government there may be we, we may be that there's a, a website software out there that will do a lot of the work for us and save on accounting and we can just transfer the whole website across. We don't know. We've just got to wait and see, really. But yeah, um, we'll fight to the end. You know, I'm a fighter. Fight all the way to the end. Yeah. And I don't want to give up my baby. I love Pop Dog. Right. Let's move on. Uh, Jonas says, um, Bobo, I can't see with your tail in the way, bird. Come on. Up. Go on. Up there. You're getting all needy today, aren't you? Um, Dinner for One is the British, but the movie was recorded in Germany in the yeah. 60s. Uh, Peter Booth says they talked about Dinner for One on QI. We've done that one already. Um, uh, Don just says, is Prop Dog, not sure what that means, um, uh, is available to pop, pop in. in. Oh, oh, right, on two lines, yeah, you okay. Can, is yeah. it available to pop in and pick something up in the next? Right, okay. So we were open to click and collect, but with the new lockdown rules, in theory, yes, you can come here and collect something, but you're not allowed to go out your, your house except for essential uh, journeys or essential shopping. So, um, yeah, if, if we're encouraging you to come here, we're encouraging you to break the law because by law, you should only be leaving the house to do exercise uh, or to do essential shopping. So, um, yeah. Uh, so if you're running don't, past. Don't, don't, don't be a naughty boy, Don. But yeah, if you are it says, yeah, if you are on the way to Tesco's, um, we can probably meet you at Tesco's and, uh, and drop you something off, but yeah. Um, you can click and collect, Don. Pay online and collect from outside. Jason, he can't, mate. You're, you're, you're breaking the lockdown rules. Um, so, yeah, it is illegal to be outside other than for uh, essential journeys. Uh, unless the magic is essential for whatever reason. If you're dying of a heart attack, unless you have the latest trick, that's possible that I could cover it. Uh, science fiction, similar to what is used by Amiga, maybe. Um, uh, no, I think Amiga's just no. standard. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I won't say what it is. It's not my place to, to, to say. Um, Kevin Peels are selling to EU customers post Brexit. Options from 1st of July to the... Uh, the oh, 1st yeah, yeah. of January. So the 1st of July, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, problem. Yeah. After 1st yeah. of July, it all goes back. Yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You've virtually copied everything, everything there from the government website, haven't you? Yeah. So we're waiting for more information about it. We'll know more when the full information comes out. Um, but, yeah, at the moment, yeah. Uh, Don says, uh, thanks, guys. See you next week. Um, maybe not, Don. Uh, Michael says, uh, you're welcome. Uh, uh, oh, Michael Stell. Oh, hello. Hello, <laughs> yeah. Michael. Thank you for joining us. Um, great to see you there. Hopefully you saw the uh, uh, the video there by Jason. And uh, welcome to the Prop Dog Live. Uh, I believe it's his first time joining us. Um, yeah, great products. Great products. 
and um, it's a shame that uh, you didn't get a phone call from Jason about the wind-up. Uh, yeah, that would have been good. Um, you are the master. Uh, uh, so Jason, not sure what he's on about there. Um, James Buchanan says, uh, or Buchanan Cohen says, yeah. uh, Boom Shanker, normal life is restored. Prop dog is back. Lovely to see you all. Thanks, James. <laughs> Come on, we're back. We're back. Yeah, Anthony says uh, hello from uh, La City de la Magie, uh, wherever that is. Um, uh, well, Vegas is, is the City de la Magie, is it? I don't know. It sounds French, though. Um, who are you calling Boom Shanker, says Jason. Uh, James says, uh, apologies for any Boom Shanking your friend's cause. <laughs> Just very excited to be watching Prop Dog again. You guys keep me locked down sane. <laughs> Thanks, James. <laughs> uh, and you guys keep us going, because without these lies, I think I would do the oh, rally as well. Yes. Of the week. I will go boom shanking Delali. <laughs> yes. Um, Hannah made me put the spare room back to normal. Unbelievable, says Jason. Oh, that's Sort it. that wife of yours out. You're a magician first and foremost. You should be ready Who? to do a Zoom call at a moment's notice. Yeah. A Zoom show. Yeah. Um, someone says, uh, hey, quick question about the shells. Is it possible to buy the large set without the initial engraving? Comes the gold digger version with engraving? I don't. Does that make sense to you? Quick question. Is it possible to buy the large set without the initial engraving? What engraving? Are they engraved? There must be. There must be. Um... Like the initial engraving? Well, comes the gold Comes the gold digger version with engraving? Drop us an email. Oh, someone. the gold digger version. Sorry, I'm looking at the, this. Is, yeah, this drop us an this email. Thing. We'll sort that well, out. Jason, 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 will Jason will know. Yeah. Hi, Simon. I don't know. Maybe we'll have there a chat. Jason uh, won't know. Yeah, yeah, Even Michael, Jason might know the answer yeah, to that yeah. one. Uh, Nigel Quinn says, uh, laugh out loud. Alex is an artist. How about Pop Dogger's art gallery like Vision On? Um, I don't know what that is, but yeah, what's vision on? No idea. Uh, Adrian Tritton says, Dave, did you ever receive the exploding toilet prank in the mail? Um, I'm not sure, Adrian. We have hundreds of those exploding um, uh, toilet pranks. Um, uh, we have loads and loads of them. So um, I'm not sure, mate. It might have arrived. It might have got lost with the rest of them. Um, so if you did send that, thank you. Um, or trying to... Oh, no, actually, I do remember you saying something. I do remember something, mate. Yeah, sorry. You, I do remember you saying something about you sending one um, to show us that we could, you could get them or where you could get them, and they were the same as the things. But yes, we were aware of that. Yeah, um, that was some time ago. Yeah. Don't know. Hi, Adrian. Yeah. Hello, mate. Uh, thanks for the sweets. <laughs> uh, Jordan said, "Oh, and uh, hi to Evie, by the way." Yeah. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Aki's uh, sister, uh, Evie, is uh, with Adrian. Um, so yes, and to the rest uh, of the family, it's not just not, no, well, yeah, not just canines. Uh, yeah, we can yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, alright with yeah. the older humanoid. Um, Jordan says uh, Lord Harry's bang sharpie is amazing. Uh, yeah, it is pretty good, yeah. isn't it? I've seen that. Um, Cash says uh, the cutish little growl when commanded to speak. Aki, not Alex. <laughs> uh, Stacy says uh, no puppy speak. Uh, she, oh, she means no puppy oh. speak. That is exactly how Dave talks to Aki. Hello, oh, Aki. Oh, you could. Hello, Bobo, you're so cute. What, <laughs> oh, Bobs? <laughs> you're cute in your Bobs. Um, Nick Adcock says uh, she spins like UFO. She does, uh, uh, oh, he spins, yeah, um, on the floor. He's, he's, he runs around like he's chasing his tail. It's quite funny. Uh, Torrance says ferocious dog. Um, yeah, uh, anything but. Uh, Otto says not sure if you're a clicker training Aki or Alex there. Yeah, uh, I've been working on Alex. Uh, so Alex, uh, Alex, well, at least Alex. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul, Paul, Paul. At least I've got oh, some. Good boy, Alex. Good boy. At least I've got someone to blame for the stains on the carpet now. That's um, that's that's good. Toilet, tra <laughs> toilet training Aki was a lot easier than toilet training <laughs> Alex. He still curls, <laughs> curls off Danny's desk every day. <laughs> Clean it up, Alex. Uh, you want to see where he pees. <laughs> He's up to the bookshelf like that every day, cocking his leg, peeing on the bookshelf. Uh, um, <laughs> Matthew Colley says, uh, Defo wants some of those new caps for the levitation device. Uh, have I missed Alex's book corner, says no, Jake. Not no, yet, not Jake. yet, mate. We're going to do that in a, in a minute. Uh, running out of time. Uh, happy year to you all, says Martin Alburn. Uh, David Short says, could you recommend a good rising card routine, please? Um, oh, there's loads in there. Cool. Uh, we were making one for... Faye, Faye recommended one we should remake, and I started making it, but um, things got carried away, and I never really did it again. I can't remember the name of it, but that was a really good one. Um, other than that, I, I don't really know many. Um, uh, I can't even, mine's gone blank. We, we sell one, I know we got one. Can Canadini um, Rising, the um, uh, Jeff McBride one. I've not seen that one, no. We've got They've the, uh, what's his name, the uh, Brazilian guy, I forget his name, he's got one. I forget. Have a look on the website, that's all we got. Um, can't really recommend any, I'm afraid. But some people here will definitely recommend one. 
Uh, excuse me. Um, Lee Alex says, uh, when the pandemic is finally over, you'll have another trip to Istanbul. Relax, no work and do all the touristy things. Yeah, I really would like to actually one day, Alex. Uh, definitely. Uh, sorry, Alex. Lee. Sorry. Lee. Alex. Alex. Lee. Lee. Alex. Lee. Pleased to meet you. Alex, I always get Lee. confused. I, I, the amount of times I've called Lee Alex because I'm so used to saying Alex all day yeah, at yeah, work yeah. is Lee Alex. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Michael says, uh, uh, Simon, the the big bisons have an engraving. The gold diggers don't have an engraving. There you go. Thank you for that, uh, Michael. Uh, Benjamin says, uh, many dogs learn the word walk and get so excited to hear it. So our dog wouldn't go crazy. We taught him the word bender. <laughs> our dog does not go for a walk. He goes He's on, on a, a bender. bender. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> He's a bender. Bender. Aki, you want to go to bender, buddy? <laughs> Thing is, Aki probably would go on a bender. Yeah, yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> Uh, no, says Andy Dingley. Uh, Alan Robinson says it took me around five years to get back to it. Oh, that's the ring uh, flight. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah See, yeah. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Yeah, no, I know people who, yep. Um, Good for you. Brendan Allen says, uh, hi guys, happy new year. How is the sales process now with Brexit? Yeah, we discussed it already, uh, Brendan. Uh, I mean, things are really quiet at the moment anyway. Really, really quiet. And uh, with Brexit, um, yeah, uh, it's a long, complex thing. But if you didn't see it, rewind to earlier on and you'll see the explanation now. I won't go for it all over again for the third time. Uh, Andy Tingley says it's uh, a ship boat uh, across... A ship boat... Across Chitsu and a boat. A ship boat across a Chitsu and a boat. What's the point? Don't get that. Ah, anyway, uh, Andy Shaw, um, I have a couple of cheese. Uh, love the bang. Um, a virtual... Blackpool Prop Vlog Convention sale will be good. Uh, we'll figure something out, Nigel. Uh, Cash says, uh, one month from now, you'll all see thousands of cards floating down the Thames and magicians <laughs> yeah. throwing cards under the bridges. Yeah, use uh, biodegradable ones. Um, Prop Vlog, under the bridges, the day Bonsall story, next week's book review. Uh, Nigel yeah. says, uh, on, a on a virtual Blackpool dealer's weekend, invite viewers virtually into the shop and then you'll learn to demo your products and new releases. All right, Boba, you're going in your cage, buddy. Come on. You're being too much now. Yeah, I think I've... Um, are we when is well, we haven't got that long to it when was blackpool when's blackpool meant to be uh 21st of uh february that yeah, is so the weekend i'm meant to be doing my um um what do you call it tough guy challenge but uh, i got a feeling with lockdown now it's all going to be cancelled so i don't think it's going to be on which we'll I'm have, we'll, i think we'll, we'll try and celebrate that weekend somehow i think we yeah. should do We'll do something, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the sequel, Stop Trolling, says uh, Cash. Stacey says, whoa, wow, that looks so pretty. The hank, uh, that is, the silk. Yes. Um, Sean Mann says, could you use the devil's hanky as kind of a switch bag for billets? Yeah, absolutely, Sean. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Nigel says, uh, will we now be able to buy Aki discounted products as well as Bobo chewed books? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's had a few, uh, oh, well, tried to have a go at a few things, but we've been pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't leave Yeah, she likes those, anymore. isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you give yourself a two queen of hearts? So Stacey, did you give yourself, did you just give yourself two queen hearts when you did your trick? Sort of card questions. Oh uh, yes, maybe, yeah. yes, maybe I did. Uh, she's joking, ha ha. Um, uh, Rich says, uh, um, uh, Alex's first trick in the book would make a great weekly feature. There you go. Oh, yeah. all right, okay. Yeah. I hear you. Get learning. That's, uh, what, 400 uh, yeah, books? Yeah, should, 400 should, books we've got. It shouldn't take me long. <laughs> I want to go and buy next week. You have a challenge. Buy next What's week? the first trick in that book? Uh, yeah, somebody should do that. Um, maybe we should just take the camera around and just point to books, and somebody should say stop. And whenever you say stop, you've got to learn the first trick from that book. Oh, mm. yeah. Um, how's your mnemonica? How is it? Yeah. Oh, it's rusty as hell now. Don't use mnemonica. Um, Ken oh, Dunn says Aki is chewing something. He carries something in his mouth when the trick was being shown. Might want to check on oh, him. He's always got something in his mouth. Yeah. Mm. Um, Finley says, uh, Rich Relish, yes, that would be great. Alex could do it from the book he's reviewed that week. Hang on, when are you going to be learning this? Not during my time. I can't afford to pay you to learn a trick from every book. Do it in your own time. <laughs> to do it well, yeah. And again, you don't have any own time, do you? Because no. you spend more time here than you do anywhere yeah, else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when he is at home, he's on his boat. boat yeah. um, oh, I want uh, a Het Flick Van 2, Flick Van. Alex. Oh, thank you, Otto. Huh, whatever that is. I oh, know. Liam says, uh, hi, just got uh, in from work. Uh, have you done a peak wallet yet? Uh, thanks. Oh, this yeah, someone wants to know about the best peak wallet we do. Um, and um, I couldn't find a razor wallet. He was interested in a razor wallet and I haven't had a chance to find one. So um, I mean, we've talked about this loads of times in the past. You know, the, the, the top choices are usually the um, um, Jack's wallet or the... One of the gold well, boxes. We've got the mini himba peak as well, haven't we? Mini himba peak. I'm not as keen on that. Um, uh, oh, 
my mind is gone. Uh, the one in the gold box, I used to use it all the time. The one with the light, but uh, they changed to be red because it didn't show in daylight. I forget what's name now. Um, Transmitter, four times better, thank you. Yeah, yes, yes, my blank. So thought transmitter used to come on top. That was really good. Um, the first version I liked with the post-it note, but you couldn't see it in daylight. The second one has a red light and it's better in daylight, but it's not quite as good. Um, and then you've got the uh, the Jack's wallet. The Jack's wallet for me is the simplest, easiest. It's a nice big window, no electronics to go wrong, no problems with daylight. Uh, but there are looks like a, few, a wallet, looks yeah. normal. But then you've got the business by Raminos. Uh, that's a nice little peak business card wallet that works well. There's quite a few peak wallets out there. They're really nice. Harry Robson's got a nice one in the worker's dream. Um, I've not seen this one actually. I'm not, I haven't seen how this one works. This, but this is this, is this what one it looks works like. with the privacy glass, the glass you can only see from one direction, I think. Ah, oh, right, okay. Yeah, so that little thing there is privacy glass. Okay. Uh, oh, see. A privacy glass uh, is really cool and you can see from one direction but you can't see from the other so you can see something clearly but the spectator from that angle can't it's used for monitor screens so ah, that yeah. you can only view your monitor so someone ah. next to you can't see it see that is yeah well, I quite like that's that. clever stuff yeah um, how robson's um uh, uh, not worker's dream yeah worker's dream wallet uses that yeah 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 okay uh, so yeah i quite like so so actually the razor wallet you could actually sort of in theory show all the way around as long as the angle's right, and then yeah. okay, yeah. okay, I quite yeah. like that. I quite like that as well. Um, I'll try, I'll try, and, I'll try and film something for you, maybe uh, Liam, or actually put something on the Prop Dog Lounge about that now, because uh, yeah. Kevin Morton says, very political tonight, boys. Almost highbrow. Oh, um, <laughs> Jeffrey says, uh, hi guys. Do you only have the black ring box? Uh, we've got two red ones coming in. Oh, they're in. They come yesterday. Ones? Have we got red ones? Yeah, I think we got two coming yesterday with yesterday's order. Oh, they must be... Yeah, uh... make sure you don't show one of those as a black oh, one. Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't know we had a... Yeah, no, two of them are red. So we decided to get two of them in. We, we didn't really want to sell them, but we thought somebody might. The thing is, for whatever stupid reason, they're charging ridiculous amounts of the red box. I mean, why? They're the same process. I guarantee I... you they won't charge more for the red than the black. They're just trying to say, oh, we'll make more money from this one, charge it in red because we'll, you know, we'll sell less oh, well, of them. It's, that, it's one of those I, annoying I, things I, that... I'm trying to find do. them because I don't hope they haven't gone out as... Uh... Uh, better not. <laughs> they only if come anyone's in, got a red ring box they only come in from yesterday, us, by the way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. If, yeah. If anyone's got a red ring box, uh, well done. Yeah. <laughs> um, enjoy it. Uh, right. Uh, Alex, video from start to finish on the boat. Uh, we, we could do a live from your boat one day. We could do a live. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Right. We've... Let's talk about something. What have we got? What have we got? Uh, oh, yeah, half past ready. We've got to hang up pretty quick, so let's talk about something fast and then let's get on. Uh, What's on that list? Oh, the boy who cried magic's back in stock. That's um, Andy Gladwin's book that only um, seems to have printed back to front, um, the cover wise. But uh, um, yeah, really nice, uh, typical vanishing ink, um, joyful. Do you want me to get the close up? Beautiful, on that? beautiful, the close -up beautifully laid that. out. Uh, where's the line? Yeah, that's that one there. Very well printed, beautiful colours. Yep, that's the whole scenario. And I think you get, I'll show you the contents actually, because the contents is, um, so Whack Your Phone, which is a bit like um, Whack Your Pack uh, by Paul Harris, which if you've ever done Whack Your Pack, or, or you don't do Whack Your Pack by Paul Harris, um, certainly look it up, because it's brilliant. Um, fireworks, I'm assuming, might be his, um, Oh, pocket mule and stuff like that. This, these are all quite well. His quite well-known close-up effects. Got his stand-up effects further down, and you got his techniques here. So um, the master push-off is the one he's famous for, which is his method of doing a double lift um, and some finesses and things like that. So um, yeah, I mean, really nice, really well laid-out book. I haven't gone through it yet, but I will do. I'll tell you what. I'll do the first trick from the book next week. There we go. I'm sure uh, it'll be um, uh, a wonderful trip. There you go. <laughs> right, um, so Aki decided that close-up pads are more comfy than her bed. There we go. Uh, right, no more comments, guys, because we are running so, out of time. So we'll do Alex's book got, corner. We got, punched, we got punched. We got punched by um, the other brothers. The other brothers? The, are you going to need to remortgage your house to buy something um, that's 3D printed? Abstract, is, abstract is it, effects. Do you it, think it might be 3D printed, David? Well, you I'm are just saying. The, I've I'm not saying. seen it yet. I've not seen it. Is it? Let's have a look. It might be a little bit 3D printed. Is it? I mean, to be fair. Are you serious? Yeah. It is completely 3D oh, it is printed. Oh. There you go. It's completely 3D printed. What? Um, so, I don't have a problem with it being 3D printed if they weren't charging you 25 bloody quid for something that costs you one pence. No, one no. pence worth of 3D printing there. 
Uh-huh. If, if they had it outsourced, maybe somebody will charge them 50 pence for it. But 25 quid for that. Whoa. Well, but, but you see, what, what you, you know, you know how it is with magic tricks. It's not what you buy. It's the, uh, it's the tutorial. It's the learning. It's the expertise. It's the 30 years of which they've been you, working it um, day in, you get day out it? over thousands. Do you get it with it? Well, that that's that, stuff. You get an hour's tutorial. Oh, that's part. Of, yeah, you get um, about fifty-minute tutorial. Where to me, um, they're desperately trying to come up with a reason as to why this exists. Uh, apart from landfill, which is not regular landfill either, because it's too small to really. Um, come on, other brothers! If you're going to release something like that, uh, at least do it at a decent price. I mean, the thing is, it does. It, so it is a card pegger essentially. It does mark the cards. You can mark cards. On the fly, so if you borrow a deck, you can peg four of a kind, for example, which will help you find four of a kind by touch or whatever. If you want to, um, do why you want you'd to? do that rather than? I mean, I'd, I'd just put a little corner crimp in all four of the cards as I'm going through the. Yeah. Um, there are lots of other ways to. Whatever they showed in their tutorial, there was a simpler, non-gimmicked way of doing it. Or they even suggest, bizarrely enough that you use it to mark the paper bags for a smash and stab on the fly. Now, I don't know, but if I'm gonna do a smash and stab and I'm not taking any precautions, the last thing I'm gonna do is to risk pegging. A, I mean, you'd, you'd have it set up in advance. You can mark your bags well in advance. You can mark your deck well in advance. I mean, I was just thinking, like, oh, you just use one-way deck. You just crimp a card. You just do, there was just, I, I just couldn't figure out, try as they might, why, although it works, why you'd do any of it? See, what bugs me is everything the other brothers seem to be releasing are the kind of stuff that I think up on a regular basis and go, do you know what? Yeah, it's an idea, but I've, I wouldn't release that. I've got too much self-respect to release that. But they seem to get released. They charge a fortune for it. And then they got Murphy's behind them hyping it up as though it's the best thing since sliced bread. Yep. And this stuff... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I can't even remember the last time I borrowed a deck of cards. Yeah. No. Um, I just. Uh, I think people are running out of ideas, so they're thinking, right, I must make some money out of magic. I'll think up something quickly. I thought that'll do. I'll make yeah, that. I'll get it 3D printed. That'll save money on it, and we can probably make, you know, well, uh, no doubt they're making about eight, nine pounds per one on it. Yeah. And then it'd be forgotten about in a week, and then they move on to the next thing, and yeah. the next thing, and it's just about making money. It's not about furthering our art or creating something great. Uh, isn't I just that? can't. I mean, I'm, I just can't. If yeah. you, I suppose, if you wanted to peg cards in advance, it would do that. Um, I, don't, I, I just, I just couldn't think. Despite everything they showed, oh, well, there's no actual performance, of course, because so it's just the two of them talking about what you could do with it. Not a single performance. No, nah, because they. I mean, I mean, there's not really. I mean, do they um, perform? Are they performers? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but well, um, no, try no. to say my everything they mentioned, I just thought I'd just use something else or I just couldn't, you know. I wonder if they do actually, because a lot of these kind of releases that a lot of people release, the the, the ones, you know, the one-hit wonders that, you know, they hype it up, they sell it out and it's completely forgotten about. They're all released by people who never really go performing because those people who perform know what works in the real world, what, what's worth doing, what's not. But I don't know. Well, there's lots of stuff that just seems to be released without any real routine as well, yeah, doesn't it? So it's, just, it's a bit like... It's a moneymaker. They're doing it not for the passion of magic, not yeah, because they've got something great. It's because they want to make money and they invent something to make money from. They go, right, I'll yeah. invent a trick and uh, and I'll sell it. I'll make some yeah. money. Right, that's done. Move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. Um, you know, we all think of ideas, but, you know, occasionally... You, this is why we don't release things on a regular basis, because I don't want to release crap out there uh, and get a bad name i mean look at what sans minds have done they've ruined the reputation oh, yeah. and we got one man two or three good products out of what 40 products they released yeah. if that and they've they ruined the name ruined the name all right i'm waffling on that right no, so yeah no true. more comments I mean, guys. True, but i mean I, I know so that first book in the nick trust book i did that to um uh, a friend the other day they were well they were, they were well how impressed. much is that book and after uh, that book is actually uh, Thirty nine ninety nine. Right, so it's ten quid, uh, fifteen quid more than the um, um, what do we call it? How many tricks in that? Oh, loads. Roughly, give a guess. Okay, I uh, could tell you quick. Uh, so, so there's twenty five, fifty, seventy five, seventy five, seventy five tricks. 
for 15 quid more and I guarantee nearly every single one in there maybe a few of them aren't but nearly every single one in there are good working tricks that you can learn and perform for the rest of your life and there won't be a fad yeah I mean I'll say yeah. yeah I mean I'll get your head around a book I just have fun with your magic really it's more fun than, you can have more fun learning magic than you can buying magic Speaking of books, we got your book corner. Yeah, go right. on. So no more comments, it. guys. It's to Alex's book corner. We'll catch up with the comments quickly. We'll do our giveaways, and then you can go and have a wonderful weekend on lockdown. You can spend the whole weekend at home, <laughs> enjoying time at home, because that's what you want to do on a weekend, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I will, because I don't get any time at home. I'm going to enjoy a couple of days, me and Aki at home, aren't you, buddy? Yeah, yeah. Enjoy some time at home, but everyone else on lockdown. Let me just get this. More time at home. Uh, Oh, while you're doing that, I'll catch up with some comments then. Yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, no politics, please. Get enough on Facebook, says Nick Story. Good call. Uh, Prop Dogs, uh, Jason says, uh, I'm, hap I'm happily spray the inside of your boat, Alex. I think he's, oh, I'll happily spray the inside of your boat, Alex. Um, I'll leave what with up to your imagination. <laughs> okay. Um, Jonas says, uh, can we declare Alex's boat uh, country, uh, his own country, and move prop dog there. That would be a good call, actually. Wonder, yeah, Radio if Caroline. This <laughs> if the Radio island Caroline. could become its own little. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, can we declare Alex? Oh, we've done that on. Uh, uh, hi, Jeffrey. Yes, we found the other colour got dirty easy. Uh, says Jason. Uh, Andy Tingley says. Uh, After listening to you, I'm glad I shut my fish and tackle shop years ago. Now. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rita, hello from Australia. It says, I've missed you. Oh, we missed you too, Rita. Your lovely little smiley face on there every week. Where have you been for the last two hours as well? Um, I've missed you, uh, and it's great you're back working in the magic industry. Thank you, Rita. Uh, Matt Wainwright says, Happy New Year, guys. Do you have any new releases coming up? Loving the pop. Still running? Question mark. Has your tough guy been cancelled? Yeah, um, no official confirmation, but I'm sure tough guy is cancelled. I'm still waiting to, to hear from them at the moment. Uh, yeah, still running, and uh, yeah, um, uh, we are still loving the pop, definitely, yeah. Uh, any releases coming up soon? Um, yes and no. The straight jackets to Jerry O'Connor. Oh, the, the, um, <laughs> my mind. Not Jerry uh, The David Duval straight jackets. Um, uh, the testing has finally been redone, so for those of you who bought some of the original ones, I had a few little issues with them. Uh, with the new versions, have all been tested and they're being made at the moment, along with the Prop Dog Table Savants. Uh, we have uh, covers coming for all our close-up mats. It's like a little laptop case for, for, for those. They're going to be coming in a few months' time. Um, I'm still trying to work on my celebrity burnout trick. Um, split decision. Give me a while. Split me. decision, Jerry O'Connell. That'll be re-released later on in the year when I get the cards printed for that. Um, where, thanks to Steve Legg, we, we might have a table available for you guys. Uh, we have uh, a special um, uh, table attachment coming that can turn your Jerry O'Connell pad into a table. For those of you that ever bought a medium and a large pad we have a little table um uh kind of attachment coming so it's like a legs and a holder you just put your close-up pad on it to the table so that's all really I haven't had time to work on too much new but i have plenty of ideas about 150 200 ideas to make at some point but uh yeah just having the time to, to, to work on it all right are you ready alex yeah well it's probably book um oh you're gonna, over to you're gonna do your intro over to oh, alex's sorry. book corner three two one Yeah, what you didn't see there is, uh, is uh, Aki was just dancing then as well. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, hello, this one's for all you mentalists out there. Um, it, I thought it was about time I read Prism by Max Maven. It is obviously uh, from his colour series of lecture notes, of which there were five. I'm not going to attempt to remember each of the colours, um, but I'm assuming uh, red, green and blue uh, <laughs> were three of them. Uh, they were... Um, released years ago in limited numbers. They were then gathered together up in his brilliant book, Prism, uh, which has become pretty much, I mean, it's one of our best-selling books, isn't it? Yep, absolutely. It regularly sells. And I'm not a mentalist, so I kind of avoided it. It sold out um, about a year ago. It wasn't available for about six months, and we had something like 50 notify one available on the website for it. Really? Yeah, went crazy. Yep. So, um, yeah, so I'll be reading this. And actually, I have to say, it is a really remarkable book. I reckon it's probably one... <sighs> I reckon it's the most accessible mentalism book I've ever read. Really? Yeah, yeah. And wow. it covers a huge range of all of the different methods um, that are out there in, in, in mentalism. The non-technological ones, so there's no technology. Um, he covers all sorts of things like, you know, secret markings, uh, equivocate, 
uh, even stooging and confederates, which I'm not a big, so funny enough, one of the tricks in here, um, pre-duction, I'd actually seen performed, fooled me badly, um, I thought it was a wonderful trick, and just read the book and realised that it uses a confederate. And I'm not a big fan of using confederates. No, me neither. But having sat in the audience, not knowing it used a confederate, and had gone away feeling blown away, I don't know whether or not... So that, that was one of the questions yeah. going to my mind, and one of those interesting yeah. things that's probably worth discussing, that whole... Is that too much of a cheating? Is that too big a lie? Anyway, but yes. it's one of the methods used in the book. It's like the hemp ring. Seen a routine done with the hemp ring, blew me away, found out that one of them was a stooge giving him a fake ring, and that just wound me up something chronic. But if you didn't find that out, you've gone away, you know, you have left that audience in that incredible sense of Yeah, but wonder. where does it stop? Why not just get 50 no, members anyway. of the audience in, in, in there and just, yeah. All right, so, um, yeah, so he uses, I reckon, pretty much, so I have read, um, uh, Animan, and he used a lot of his stuff you probably can find in Animan or the Jinx. There's nothing new, no new methods, but all of the old classic methods that I reckon every mentalist really is all you need to know. And he explains it really clearly in the effects he uses it with. I mean, they use properly, you know, for really good, powerful effects. And if you know Max, I mean, his performances are really what makes it. Mm. And he knows that. So if you follow what he says um, and learn a bit by how he presents his tricks and the method he uses them and why he uses those methods, um, it's absolutely dynamite. And it's it's written very clearly. You've got what, I mean, there's probably best part 50 odd effects, I would have thought. Um, some of them are really famous, so his four sided triangle. Squarret. Squarret, I can't remember. <laughs> Square carrot? Um, and it's absolutely, I mean, it's brilliant. Nothing, nothing difficult. A little bit of sleight of hand, but you're kind of talking double lifts. You know, and I think that's the, that is sort of the bare minimum. Um, no expensive props, no technology, completely foolproof, um, and powerful effects that anyone can do. And I think if you're starting out in Mentalist, then it's the perfect book for you. Even if you're an experienced Mentalist, then this is how to, to just do Mentalism properly without any expensive gimmicks. And um, uh, yeah, it's just really good, simple stuff. I mean, awesome. Um, I have more to say about it, but I've got now. Mine's gone blank. Thumbs up for Prism. Yes, yeah, Max it's Maven it. as well. You can't go wrong with Max. I mean, yeah, legend. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, it, 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 it reminded me of reading Animan and just thinking that's too simple, you'll never get away with it. Hmm. Um, but really good, really good. I just, um, yep, yeah, so, I've, well, it's on, I've kept it on my shelf, actually, so I didn't bring it back. So. Awesome. Okay, right. Um, uh, does anybody out there remember and perform the trick all aboard? So if you remember all aboard, um, please uh, just, just say yes, I know the trick and, and, and basically I performed it. So uh, yeah, I'm looking for somebody who knows it or used to do it in a gig. Uh, it's not available anymore. Um, it's been discontinued. So I'm um, just wondering if anyone out there um, used to use it and, and basically um, would have kept it in their act if they still had it. So uh, yeah, just do let us know before the end. Uh, right, okay, Cash says, magic shops are essential. Magic provides entertainment and happiness for a lot of people, making sure we don't go insane, more than most of us already are. Um, yeah, well, you can argue that with the police, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they'll, uh, they'll have fun with that. <laughs> uh, I mean, we all agree with that, but they won't. Uh, Eddie Grant, what silk would you recommend for a HD thumb tip? Uh, the same as I'd recommend for Vernay. Um, but yeah, uh, any silk, uh, you can get up to nine inches into a HD, any bigger than that, it won't go in. Uh, one of the problems I find with the HD one is it is a rubberized thumb tip, and that rubberized does mean that when you're pulling silks out, it can be a little bit tricky to get them out at first, so a um, bit of talcum powder in it will help with that. Uh, Sandy Wilson says, are the shells? The initials were clearly visible inside the shell on the video demo. demo. Are those on all of them? Uh, I'm sure Jason will answer well, that if he hasn't already. Shells, uh, Chihuahuas. Uh, who oh, now yeah, have yeah. PTSD laugh out loud, says Andrew Short. Right? Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have thought, I mean... It well. doesn't, it, it, the initials, I think, it just, yeah, you've got a piece of art in your hand. I mean, people don't really think they're real walnut shells because you don't get walnut shells that big, so people will know they're a handcrafted item, which is, is ideal. Um, yeah. Well, there you go, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jonas says, uh, David Short, Stephen Tucker's hallucination is brilliant rising card. Um, uh, where the spectator thinks of any card in the deck and the card rises out of the deck. Uh, as Alex mentioned, Jeff McBride's uh, Kenderville yeah, rising, rising is also yeah. brilliant. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other one is uh, Henry Harris. Henry, Henry Harry. No, Henry. No. Harry, oh, 
Henry, Henry Evans, Henry Evans. Oh, Henry yes. Henry, Henry, French guy. Got there, yes. Uh, is he French? Isn't he French? I thought he was like Portuguese, or not Portuguese, he's a Brazilian or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I think South we're, American, we're, we're, we're. Argentinian, something like that. Henry, 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 Henry Evans. Does he speak, or maybe he speaks Spanish. Or maybe, maybe, Spanish, maybe he's yeah, from yeah. a, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, Henry I Evans. Thought, yeah. thought, Henry thought, Evans has a rising card, which apparently is quite good. Um, but I, I still can't think of the, uh, the other one. Um, uh, my mind's gone blank. I, thought I might think of it in a minute, but there is another version out there. Um, uh, Adam Evans says, uh, "Do you know the effect selfie kings?" Uh, I've got it confused over the video. I've got confused over the video. Well, I think we've got it in stock, um, so I'll have a look. Yeah, uh, drops an email, mate. Uh, Razor wallet is great and packs small. Says uh, Jeffrey. Uh, Aidy Merritt says, "I placed an order on Christmas Eve and it showed up in Los Angeles on Monday." Thank you. Loving the uh, mystery blocks and uh, my J Well wallet. Was it was it um, meant to go to Los Angeles? Yeah, that, uh, yeah. oh, I'm assuming I, that's good. So. Yeah, yeah, you must welcome, mate. And with mystery blocks, don't forget, wear that gimmick in, wear the flapping. You've got to go back and forth quite a few times to get it really loose and to work really, really well. A lot of people don't read the instructions and complain it doesn't work. Um, Jason says, uh, we know it, but nobody in the shop has done it, Adam. Um, no red ones in yet, Dave, uh, says Jason. Uh, Rita says, it's been crazy busy now with the blessing, uh, which is the blessing after lockdown. Uh, yeah, absolutely, but it's not busy here. Uh, don't panic, Mr. Bonzel, uh, says Jason. Uh, Punch is actually... Uh, the other Aki's. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, oh yeah, Aki, Aki oh, yeah Punch, brother. by the way, if you are looking for Punch, they've, they've apostrophized it so there's no E in it, so you've actually got to spell it incorrectly to yeah. find it, which is just genius. Yes, of course, that's going to help us. I mean, out, it? Well, it's cooler. Yeah, mm, apparently. Um, sounds like another piece of rubbish, says Walter. Uh, abstract effects is quickly approaching Scam's Minds levels of shittery, says Otter. Um, Sans Minds 2, says Walter. Um, other brothers, if you're watching or someone forwards this video onto you, take note. Yeah, more thought into it. Um, Alan Morrison says the best way to peg cards is, uh, on the is. Uh, Sentio from Vanishing. Oh, I like it. Sentio on on the oh, I think it means yeah. like on the fly. Um, yeah, uh, I'll put that up so people can read that. There you yeah. Go. Uh, Nigel Quinn says I love Alex's quote. You can have more fun learning magic rather than buying magic. Oh uh, yeah, good call. Um, uh, oh, Prism received it from Prop Dog last week. It's great, says Sean Man. Uh, Nigel says um, Alan does a far better yeah. card system. Uh, there you go on that one. Um, I've got a link up, people can view that. Uh, Walter says, uh, have a great evening, weekend, week. Great to see you all back. Thank you, Walter, and to you too. Uh, yes, I know all aboard, says Charlie. Right, Charlie, um, I'm glad you know it, mate. Train to get cartoon one. Yes, um, do you perform it, though, Charlie? Do you know how to perform it? Do you perform it on a regular basis, or did you? If you do, just let us know quickly. Uh, I have all aboard and used it. It gets great reactions. Uh, wish it was available again, says Charlie. Right, okay. So I've got all the information I need. Um, Henry Evans is from Argentina. Thank you, Jonas. Yes, well, I knew Does he speak Spanish, then? Yeah. That's why I'm confused, yeah. you see. So I thought it was from Spain, because, oh, uh, you see. Si. Aquí. Aquí. Um, um, right. um, Charlie, this works out great, mate. Right, so all aboard. The reason I was asking those questions is because we have all aboard. Now, we used to sell all aboard. Uh, we were the... Um, um, uh, official distributors of it. Well, we didn't create it. Tom Fullery, um, who was, uh, I forget his real name now, um, created it. And uh, we used to sell it and it was discontinued. But the other day we found a pack of them, Charlie. So we found this in a box. The thing is they've got no instructions. Now, if I'd have said, who wants this? Everyone would have said, yes. And then I wanted, no, to, go, no I wanted to go to somebody it. who knows how to do it. Um, and would perform it uh, and those without the instructions. So uh, Charlie, I'm going to send this to you, my friend. That is yours. Uh, it's a brand new deck, just has no instructions on it. So uh, that was why I didn't show it because you know what it's like. You say, does anyone want this? And everyone goes, yeah, I'll have it. And then we've got to figure out who deserves it and who doesn't. But at least you deserve it, mate. Um, so uh, Eamon, sorry, mate, you missed out on that by one uh, comment. <laughs> you would have been next on the line. Um, uh, and he knows that yeah. performance. Great. Uh, Jonas says, uh, to be clear, Stephen Tucker rising card. I was talking about the spectator only thinks of a card, no picking a card. Oh. Oh, Stephen Tucker used to come up with some brilliant stuff. Uh, you're most welcome, Charlie. Uh, he did, didn't he? Yeah, well, I used to love Stephen, Stephen's yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Just reminded me, um, uh, what is wrong with my mind? Um, I don't know. Am I getting older or am I getting Alzheimer's? This happened to everybody. Um, Have some more sugar, Dave. More sugar. Uh, Angelo, Angelo, Angelo Carbone um, has oh, yeah. a brilliant rising card. Um, I forget the name of it. It's a, it's a weird name. Um, the something of the something. Anyway, but basically all he does is hold his deck cards there and he says somebody name a card, they name it, that card rises slowly out. It's insane. 
I think it's one of those things, he didn't release it as a trick as such, he would make up the occasional deck and someone would pay like 400 quid for it. It was just right. crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, um, the something of the something, somebody here will probably post it up there. I mean, uh, he's still got, has he still got his website? Does he still sell stuff for him? I don't know. Because he know. made, this, I saw him at the uh, Magic Circle and he had, um, you know when you used to build card um, pyramids? Yes, yeah. He had that, and he had his card pyramid, and you build the card pyramid, and then you take all the cards off from the bottom, and it sort of balances on a... Yeah. Really yeah. nice, really nice. nice. I don't yeah. know if that's on his site. Um, it's a brilliant fact. Well, Angelo's rising card, I'll tell you after the thing, uh, how we, uh, I'll tell you the method after we, we shut down, because it's ingenious. It is, I mean, it's smart. I, I shudder to think how long each deck takes to make, but uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, right, we are all done in the comments. Thank you for catching up. Right, let's do a giveaway. Um, we're going to do another giveaway. First of all, we're going to give away... Um, oh, hang on, hang on. Well, you can find that. Um, so we've got pre mentaliction by uh, Chris Dugdale. Um, it's on pre-sale from 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, we've got them in stock. And um, it's a mental effect, um, a prediction from a wallet that can be done over Zoom. Um, check out the check it, check it out on the, the video. Um, but yeah, nice leather wallet. Okay, right. This is a um, one of our close-up pads. It's a roll-up version. Um, and this is the, uh, the silver... Um, uh, well, gator, it's, it? yeah, we call it gator pad. It's actually like a crocodillo kind of effect on it, like a gator crocodillo. skin. Crocodillo. I like crocodillo better than gator. Well, that's what they call it. the material. If you buy this material, they call it crocodillo. But um, Jordan, who we took the business over from, used to call it gator. So that, that name kind of stuck. Now, this one here, we're going to give it away because there's a slight default with it. I'm going to show you on the close-up pad what the default is. It won't make any difference to anyone. Most people will probably never notice it, but I can't sell it as a new one. So if you hold that, Alex. Um, well, it took quite a long time for you to show it to me. Yeah, well, it took me a long while to find out what was wrong with it i knew there was something wrong with it uh, but i couldn't find out what right so on the pad over here look just down there you see that it's a, it's a slight separation there it's not very much it's it's the slightest bit of a separation on it um uh where is it yeah there's another little bit there but that's pretty much all that's wrong with it other than that it is a perfectly good close-up pad uh there is nothing wrong with it at all um and no one will probably ever realize that is even there but we are going to give it away and they do retail uh, i think it's about 60 or quid or something like that anyway for it normally uh, but we are going to give that away as one of our, our prizes. Um, and uh, uh, and the second prize, we are going to do um, just one of the regular giveaways as we normally do. Now, um, uh, let's see. Do you want to get a deck of cards? Oh, now, yeah. I'm sure you all know the rules. If you don't know the rules, basically, in a minute, not until I say, I will put on there now on the, uh, the thread over there. And when I say now, I want you to name a playing card. You get one choice only. Anyone who names two cards will be disqualified. And it's going to be... The first card that comes up that is the same or nearest to this card will win it. So basically, if you call out four, two people call out four spades, it's the first one that comes up on our screen will win it. Okay, and um, we'll do it twice. Actually, we'll do it once for the pad because not everyone will want the pad. Okay, um, so the, uh, we'll do it once for the pad, and then we'll do it once for the normal giveaway. We get to choose a prize from a category. So let's just do the pad first of all. I'm going to give you um, just 30 seconds for the pad. Okay, um, uh, and all you got to do is name a card uh, in that 30 seconds. So let me type out the word now. So as from now, so name a card on there quickly. Uh, we will pick a card and the nearest one to that card will win the pad only. If you don't want the pad, you're not interested in the pad, then you can wait for the next one uh, as well. So um, uh, and what we'll do is we'll see if... Uh, Aki, you are going to be waking up a bit? Do you want to pick a card uh, isn't, for it's us? Isn't it, everyone's just going to enter both, aren't I? Yeah, I suppose that's fine, yeah. Well, no, no, a lot of people have pads, they're not really interested in the pad, they'd rather go for one of the other prizes in the uh, the main prize category. So we're going to do a quick one here. So 30 seconds is up now, so no more cards now. So I'm going to type in uh, stop, and any cards named after my stop will not count. So uh, here we go. Uh, there we go. Right, so we've got a load of cards there. So all we need to do is to get a card selected. Aki, do you want to have a go? Aki, do you want to have a go, buddy? Do you want to have a go? One of those? A bit one? Come on, Aki. Come on. Nah, he's not a bit one. Okay. He's too sleepy. You can do one. Anyone you like. Just grab one. There we go. What have we got? What have we got? So to win hearts. the prize, the two of hearts. So whoever's closest to the two of hearts uh, will win the pad. Uh, let's have a quick look and then we shall do the regular giveaway afterwards as well. Ooh, um, I think I saw one then as I went past. Let's go back up quickly. There we go. Right. So there's the now. So two of hearts. Let's have a look. Uh, four of hearts closest at the moment is Ken. Ken. Ken, um, yeah. Ken Dumb, that is. Not Ken Fart, is also known the four of hearts. Um, hearts, six, seven, seven. 
Ooh, a lot of two of diamonds. That was close. Mm. Two of spades. Close. Uh, five hearts. Can two of hearts. Oh, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Doug. Doug, Doug, Doug Thornton. Um, congratulations. You just got there in time. Three or later. Well, yeah, so done, Doug. Though. Congratulations, Doug. Um, you have won yourself a pad. Now, Doug, I think you're one of our customers anyway. I recognise the name. If you're not, if you never ordered from us before, drop us an email with your details on and we'll send you the pad out first thing on Monday morning. Uh, right, so um, uh, we're going to do another giveaway. Um, for the main prize on this one, go to the PropDog website. At the bottom of the PropDog website on the main page, you'll see a category that says Facebook Live Giveaways. You can choose any item on there that's in stock. Drop us an email. Say, hi, my name is so-and-so. Um, I won the prize and... Um, uh, I want this, okay, and you can choose anything on that that category there, and we will send it to you as uh, well on Monday. So uh, as from now, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Wait Three, for two, it. one, go. So again, we've got another 30 seconds there um, for anybody to name a card, and uh, you will win a prize. Uh, let's have a quick go. See what's going on. Um, is that gone? I can't see it. Uh, where's it gone? Oh, there it is. There. Uh, I said. Two was somebody jumped the gun, uh, Kevin Morton. A <laughs> uh, bit of a delay for me, says Michael. Uh, Doug Thornton, thanks, gents, for the pad. You're most welcome, Doug. Um, right, how are we doing? Almost three, two, one. Oh, I wrote atop, but atop will do. <laughs> when you see the word atop, no more cards after that. Right, so uh, are you ready? Let's do another one. Look at you, absolutely zonked. He's had a tough, yeah. tough day. Tough, tough day one, tracing, tracing drones. Right, anyone you want, just grab one out. That's Perfect. Uh, no classic forces involved here. Uh, what have we got? Well, I don't think it's... Oh! It's the classic. Ace of Spades, the second most commonly called cards in Magic. Right, the Ace of Spades. Let's see who's closest. Uh, no one's going to have named the Ace of Spades. Well, I've got the it's Nine of Spades so far. No, the Eight of Spades is so far, Jacob, but I'm sure that's going to be beaten. Um, uh, six, six of Spades. Robert Spades. Uh, Robert Troy Skews, isn't it? Yeah, Robert Skews. Closest so far. Um, ooh, what have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Ah, oh, it's a clubs, Walter. So close. Um, oh, no one's close at the moment. What was it? Four? Uh, no, no, nine, nine spades. Three clubs, eight diamonds, six diamonds, seven clubs, five of spades, spades with uh, Hans. Five of spades is closer. So, so who's that? Hans. Uh, Hans, yeah. Hans is closer at the moment. Birthday card, says Otto. Your winner. Uh, oh, four of spades, Chris Watts. Getting closer. You know they're going down. Five, six, yeah. uh, six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, that's gonna be the last person, isn't it? Uh, oh, that's, that's it. it. That's it. For a space. So Chris, what's that? Yeah, to Chris. Congratulations, Chris. Uh, right. So Chris, go on the prop dog website. Go at the bottom. Go to the uh, the giveaway category. Choose anything you want from there. As long as it's in shop stock. Check the stock number on it because some of them might be a, a zero. They shouldn't be, but they might be. Uh, and yeah, we will send that out to you on Monday. Congratulations. So, uh, yes, absolutely. Right. Thank you all for joining us this week. Um, uh, we did miss you all. We missed you terribly, but we will be back uh, next week and um, uh, we'll be back with uh, little Sleepy Aki and Bobo. Uh, have a great weekend. Um, stay well, stay healthy and enjoy the lockdown, guys. Um, yeah, see you later. Bye. Bye.